really want you guys to have an expectation and also to pray with us. So when we're praying, don't just sit back listening, pace around the room, pray in the spirit, call out to God, cry out to God, be hungry for revival. Like we wanna stir something on the inside of you. We wanna get you passionate about prayer. We wanna get you passionate about the word. I believe some of you tonight, you're gonna get your joy back. You're gonna get your praise back. You're gonna get your passion back. Some of you have lost your fire and your zeal for God and you're in this broadcast thinking you just randomly showed up Friend, God brought you into this broadcast for such a time as this. There is an anointing right now in the earth. The presence of God is moving in an unprecedented way. And so we had revival yesterday at four services, packed out people hungry. God moved testimonies. We're believing that's gonna overflow into tonight. And not that we're gonna touch you, not that we're gonna do anything for you, but as we pray, God, who hears the prayers of the righteous, the right. prayers of the righteous are powerful. God is gonna respond and touch you with his power. Whether you get healed in your body, whether you get born again tonight, whether you get filled with the Holy Spirit, or maybe you get delivered. Maybe tonight's the night where God's gonna bring you out of that prison cell. God's gonna break the bondage of depression, the bondage of anxiety, the bondage of fear, and break in your life. So we can't undervalue prayer. This is, and I, again, I was saying earlier, this is the most important thing we can do. It really is. It's the most important thing we can do is praying, crying out to God, seeing revival. And so we, we're gonna pray for you tonight. We're gonna teach on some prayer, healing, baptism, but we also believe that this is gonna start a prayer culture in your life, that prayer is gonna be like oxygen, where you just breathe. You don't, it's like, you never forget to breathe and we can never forget to pray. We gotta pray without ceasing. So let's talk about it, let's do it. We're gonna teach, we're gonna preach, we're gonna pray. We're gonna mix it all in. This is just flow. We have no notes, we have no agenda. We're just flowing in the Holy Ghost. We're gonna minister to you guys and we're just gonna believe for the power and the presence of God to touch you guys tonight. Yeah, and you know, the privilege that we have in prayer is uh, I think sometimes we have to really evaluate how great of a privilege we have to be Us. able to approach the God of the universe who made every tree, who made every you know molecule of H2O that fills the ocean, that made everything that we see and know, and uh, to be able to... To be able to approach that God by the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, the basis of our access to the throne of God is the blood of Jesus Christ. The reason why we can come boldly into the throne room of grace and mercy and to obtain grace. Grace is a spiritual empowerment mm. that allows you to break free from every curse, break free from every sin, every addiction, and enter in to the blessing, enter into the power of God, enter into the things that heaven has to offer you. And the reason we have this access is on. based on the blood of Jesus. So I want to remind some people before we even get into anything today, because if you're going to pray from a standpoint of, woe is me, I'm a wicked sinner, uh, you know, I'm just a wretched, deprived piece of garbage, you're not going to have results in prayer. You Come have on. to first and foremost understand 2 Corinthians 5.21, this is a... a crucial verse to get into your spirit tonight and that verse says he jesus who knew no sin mm. became sin on our behalf so that we can become the righteousness of god in christ jesus when i come before the father i don't i don't address him as just god i address him as my heavenly father and uh, i don't come before him with stained garments come on thinking of my past, a sin consciousness, I come before him with a conscience that has been sprinkled by the blood. Mm. The Bible says, you who were red as scarlet, you'll now be made white as snow. You who are as red as crimson, you'll now be made white as wool. There's nothing that separates me. If you have repented and you have confessed your sin to the Father, the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, something the blood of goats and bulls could not do. It couldn't take away that sin consciousness. But what the blood of a bull and a goat could come not on. do, the blood of Jesus did for us. Hallelujah. So good. And we can come before his presence with a holy boldness. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19 to 23, very powerful scriptures. It says, let us now, knowing all this, because Hebrews 9 and 10, Paul pretty much gives you a summary of everything I just said. And then he moves in and talks about prayer. He says, so now, based on our understanding of what we just said, let us draw near. Mm. Let us draw near. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're drawing near. God would have never invited you to pray unless he had a will to answer prayer. 
Why would God invite you to pray unless he had a desire to answer your prayers tonight? No matter what it is, whether it's the baptism in the Holy Spirit, whether it's divine healing for your body, whether it's deliverance for your mind or anything the devil's doing to you, there's nothing, there's nothing that the devil's done to you or is a product of original sin that the power of prayer cannot break off your life here and now. Jeremiah 33, 3, come unto me or call unto me. Call unto me and I will answer you. Not I might answer you. I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which we know not of. That's what we're doing tonight. We're drawing near with a true assurance of faith. And we're not going to be disappointed. For those that trust the Lord shall never be put to shame or disappointed. And I want to also add too is like praying with faith that God's going to answer our prayer. We're not praying tonight like we're playing Holy Ghost roulette wheel going, I'm yeah. going to put it all on black or put it on red. And we hope somehow yeah. in the slot machine of prayer, sometimes our prayer requests are like a coin in the slot machine hoping maybe if we get lucky, God's going to answer the prayer. But the Bible says if we pray according to his will, right. not our will, he'll answer on our behalf. Jesus said if you ask for anything in my my name and it's according to my father's will it'll be answered unto you so we believe tonight we're not praying some fictitious prayers some selfish prayers we are praying that family members will be saved we are praying that bodies would be healed we are praying that demons would be driven out we are praying that God would open up doors that no man can close Amen. and that God would close doors that no man can open we are not praying some random prayer shooting in the dark our faith is what puts our prayers on target we are coming right. with believing God we know you're going to do this we know this is your will your will is that no man shall perish and so when I pray for my friends or family that aren't saved I know it's the will of God that God's going to answer I know it's the will of God to save them that me and my household shall be saved Amen. that as Joshua said as for me and my house we will serve the Lord James says if you pray and you're double-minded you actually will receive something. People always say, if you pray double-minded, you're not gonna receive anything. No, James says, you're gonna receive something. He says, here's what you're gonna receive, nothing. That's what you get. If you pray and you have unbelief and you're wavering, you're like, I don't really know, maybe God will, maybe God won't, you're going to receive nothing from God. So as we pray today, as we pray tonight, we are, we are not just begging here. We're not beggars, That's we're right. believers. Come on. The Bible says we boldly approach the throne of grace. We make our petition known before God. And petition is a special type of prayer where we're asking God to do what only God can do. We're not asking God to give us a sports car. That's something you can get a job, you can work hard, you can save your money and do. We are asking God to do the impossible, the illogical, the irrational, the supernatural. We're not. We're also not praying to remove responsibility because sometimes you said this when you're preaching yesterday. We're like, Lord, save my mom. Lord, save my grandma. Lord, save my grandpa. And the, and the Lord's like, When's the last time you even witnessed to them? So we're not praying prayers to escape responsibility. Right. We are praying. We're interceding. We're petitioning, Amen. and we're asking the Lord give us a boldness so that we can do what you've called us to do. So this is not a cop-out for not witnessing, not sharing. We have to be careful that we're not delusional praying for people that we're not willing to witness to, praying for people that we're not willing to lay hands on. You know, you go to your church and say, oh, I'm sick in body, and the pastor's like, oh, we're gonna be praying for you. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, gather the elder, elders, anoint them, the prayer of the righteous availeth much. So we are praying believing for God to move. You know, we have that worship keyboard song. Is that on right now? I see it there on the OBS. If we can try to get that going where it says worship song, we can play that as we pray as well, just to see. I know it's not on the little thing, so I'm not sure. But man, we're believing for a sovereign move of God tonight. I want to start with, instead of starting with healing, because we're going to pray for healing, let's start with praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is the moment for me, TJ, when I say I was an atheist and then I got baptized in the Holy Spirit when God changed my life, where everything changed when I repented and turned to God. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is so essential. We need this so majorly in the body of Christ. Right. We're going to give you guys a chance right now to get baptized in the Holy Spirit or maybe get re-baptized in the Holy Spirit. Like some of you are like, oh, I got filled five years ago six years ago friend you need a fresh filling right. of the holy spirit the bible says do not be drunk on wine which ruins your life but be filled with the holy spirit so in the same way you can drink alcohol every day which you shouldn't but it, you you're, you people the world does we can be filled more than one time with the Holy Ghost, with the right. Holy Spirit. So we're going to pray. It's not hard to receive it. We're going to pray and we're going to believe that if you ask, God is going to give you the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that God is going to baptize you 
with a fresh touch of his power. Some of you are gonna begin to speak in tongues. Some of you are gonna feel an inner boldness. It's not about feelings, it's about faith, but some of you, right. you're going to feel something change in you. There's gonna be a conviction. Some of you aren't convicted of anything. You gossip, you murmur, you sin, you compromise, and there's no conviction. The Holy Spirit, when he comes in and baptizes you, John said, I baptize with water, but one comes greater that baptizes in the Holy Ghost and fire. When you get baptized, Reinhard Bonk used to say, when you get dipped in that, into that river, of hot lava, of liquid fire. When God baptizes you in that river of fire, when God pours out a spirit, there's a new boldness about you. There's a new conviction about you. There's a new hunger about you. So we're gonna pray. That's the best way to start, I think. Pray, yeah, let's absolutely. pray for the baptism. Let's cry out for the baptism and then we'll pray miracles and then uh, we're gonna pray some deliverance as well and then we'll pray for the chat. We're also gonna be later ministering directly to the chat, whether it's prophecy, whether it's miracles, whether it's healing, we're gonna be doing that as well. But let's talk about a little bit and then pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the Greek word for baptism is baptizo. And it was actually a term they used in the clothing industry where mm. they would take a garment and whatever dye, color of dye that they wanted to color the garment, so they'd have like a regular gray garment, and they'd put it into a purple dye or a blue dye or a red dye. And as they dipped it in, they would, the Greek word is baptizo. So what they'd do is they'd fully immerse, they would fully immerse the garment into the dye until the very nature of the dye was ingrained within it. And the, mm. dye, the dye had totally taken over the garment and that there was no patches left of uh, whatever color the garment was before. And so when John said, that, like you quoted, that I baptizo in Come water, on. he would baptize people by immersing them fully. That's why we don't trinkle a little bit of spray on the forehead or, you know, we dip them fully. We immerse them fully into the water because that's what the Greek word means. So when John said, I baptizo you in water, but one's coming after me who's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. You know, everybody, they talk about John the Baptist as if he's the only Baptist there is. Come but on. there's not just one Baptist in the Bible. There's Jesus the Baptist too. The only difference is the substance which they're baptizing in. John baptized in water. And uh, to, to signal the, or to, it was symbolic of the cleansing from our yep. past life and sin. But Jesus is also the baptizer. He's Jesus the Baptist. Come but on. the Holy Ghost and fire is that which he's dipping you in. And when he baptizes you, he does it so that he fully immerses you into the Holy Ghost until the very nature of the Holy Ghost gets on you until you start to smell like the Holy Ghost, Come until on. you start to look like the Holy Ghost on the earth, until you start to talk like the Holy Ghost. You know, essentially, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which the the entry into the operation of those gifts is the baptism in the Holy mm. Ghost. You can't operate in the gifts of the Holy Ghost until you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. And so when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, there are three categories of the Holy Spirit, of, of the gifts of the Spirit. There are the power gifts. These are the gifts that empower you to do, to, 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 to act like God, mm. working of miracles, gifts of healing, and the gift of faith. There are the inspiration gifts. These are the gift of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and uh, the gift of prophecy, this allows you to speak like God. Come on. And then the third category of the gifts are the revelation gifts. And this is the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the discerning of spirits. This allows you to think like God. Hallelujah. Wow. So when you get baptizo in the Holy Ghost, you enter into this dimension of his power where you can now think like God through the gifts of the spirit. Come you on. can talk like God and you can act like God in that he begins to use you. Philippians 2.11 says, now God is at work in you, but not just in you. See, I talked about it yesterday briefly. The Holy Ghost does three things to you. One thing he does is when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, he'll break every chain off Come your on. life. It'll just snap off. The second thing that happens is power to uh, power in you. He changes you from the inside. He burns off insecurity. He burns off inadequacy. He burns off all the Adamic nature. The all-consuming fire of God takes care of that. But then power through you. God is not just at work in you. He wants to work through you to impact your generation. Come on. So that you don't have this mundane nine to five type of life where you're just checking in, checking out, storing up for retirement. But then when all is said and done, you're going to have nothing to show Come in eternity. On. The Holy Ghost. You know, I, I have people that ask me all the time, do you think I can make heaven without the baptism in the Holy Ghost? Or can you scripturally make heaven without the baptism of the Holy Ghost? And I say scripturally, yeah. You, you know, there's many people that weren't filled with the Holy Ghost that made heaven. But it's going to be a, a lot harder in the coming days 
to not carry this fire in your spirit. Come on. To not carry that which, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that backbone that they carry, the Holy Ghost puts that backbone in you. Where you're not bowing to the spirit of Antichrist in this world. You're not bowing to the to, to the to the spirit of uh, wicked agenda that's trying to overtake this generation. You're not bowing to whatever uh indoctrination that's going on in the world you're not bowing to those things you're standing up you the holy ghost the first thing he's going to do to you tonight is give you a backbone to take a stand for righteousness in your generation come on yes i believe it tonight some of you that are not bold god is going to embolden Hallelujah. you with the holy spirit and power god is going to convict you and god is going to comfort you and you're going to have the power to do the work. That's the right. Bible says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive not a bad attitude, not laziness, not anger, not bitterness, not resentment. Ye shall receive power, that supernatural power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and the power turns you into a witness. Okay, you're not, uh, you're not someone that's a debater, an arguer, bitter. You are a witness, and we witness unto him. And so the Holy Spirit is going to give you the power, the supernatural power, to transcend your natural limitations. In the natural realm, you can't lay hands on a sick person, and they will recover. In the natural realm, you can't cast out a demon. In the natural realm, you can't do anything spiritual. But the Holy Spirit takes you to a new playing field, transcends you to a supernatural life. And now it's not just I, but it's Christ living Hallelujah. in me. And that life I live in the body, I live through the power of the Holy Spirit. I live by the, the Spirit of Almighty That's God. Right. So the Holy Spirit becomes everything. You become a person that says, I can't live without the Holy Spirit. I can't breathe without the Holy Spirit. I can't be a good father without the Holy Spirit. I can't be a good mother without the Holy Spirit. I can't be a business owner. Like we have to rely on this person who is a person. Holy is his name. Spirit is defining who he is, but his name is holy. We can't live our lives without this. And then also, I wanna add the, this, what you said, TJ, the Holy Spirit makes us like Christ. That's right. Jesus said, it's better that, you, that I go so I can send the Spirit and now that spirit is going to make you like me and I, you're now going to be my ambassador on the earth, my enforcer, my representative. And so if Jesus dealt with unclean spirits as his ambassador, I'm going to deal with unclean spirits. Right. If Jesus dealt with sickness, which by the way, I love what you said yesterday, Jesus never put sickness on anybody. He doesn't put sickness on people. He takes sickness from people. Right. Then if I encounter sickness, I'm going to deal with it the way that Jesus dealt with it. If Jesus came and preached with boldness, I'm his representative. I'm not going to wait on my pastor. I'm not going to wait on my leader or our leader as a representative of Christ. I'm with power, with boldness, with passion, going to bring the gospel to my job. You are not some come weak. On. There's 3,500 of you on here. Imagine if 3,500 of you tonight, right now, got baptized and the Holy Ghost and fire went into your job, went into your school, went into your community and wreaked havoc on Satan's kingdom. And the world began to declare, the men that are turning cities upside down have now entered into the city. We have been called to turn cities upside down. Maybe you're there flipping burgers, but God says you're being called to flip nations. You Come might on. be at Starbucks, at Walmart, at Costco, at a police officer, a, a teacher, a nurse, but God didn't give you his spirit and now everything changes. Now your life becomes about representing God. So. The question you need to ask yourself tonight is, am I representing God properly? And if the answer is no, you need the Holy Ghost. That's and right. if the answer is yes, you, you need, need the Holy God. Ghost. Jesus said, wait in Jerusalem. If the disciples could not do what God called them to do without the baptism of the Come Holy on. Spirit, you can as well. And this is something most people don't talk about. The disciples, the 12, Jesus actually blew the Holy Spirit into them. And then on the day of Pentecost, that was actually a second baptism for some of the disciples showing that we can get baptized. If you look at, uh, baptized more than once. And if you look at Paul, when he came to Ephesus, they were believers there. They said, we believe in John's baptism, but Paul says, have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost? And they yeah. go, who's the Holy Spirit? They don't even know. We didn't even know that they said this. We didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. Some of you watching, you didn't even know there was a baptism of the Holy Ghost. You've been in such a dead, dry, stale church that's about as deep as a puddle for so long, you've never even experienced the Holy Ghost. But tonight, God is give, bringing you this message. This is his word, not our word. This is not our power, it's his power. This is not about us, it's about him. God is bringing you this so that you can receive the Holy Spirit. What are a couple ways we can receive? Let me give one and then I'll give you, have you give one. One of the ways you can receive is very simple, is by thirsting for it. Many people are like, I want the Holy Ghost and they sit around waiting. 
The Bible says in John, I think it's John 7, those that hunger and thirst shall be filled. If you want to be filled, you need to hunger, you need to thirst. And then John says, he preached this yesterday, he's speaking of the Holy Spirit when he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So I got to be hungry. Like I have a bottle of water right here next to me. This bottle, I could be dying of thirst. This is not gonna do anything for me unless I open up the cap and actually drink the water. So Jesus said, hunger and thirst. And then he says, drink. If anyone comes, they may drink of me and they'll get that living water. So we can't sit back tonight passively. We need to thirst, we need to hunger. Well, what does that look like? It looks like you being here tonight. It looks right. like you crying out to God as we pray. It looks like you saying, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit and your power. And then you drinking of the Holy Spirit. What other ways would you recommend people that are watching? Maybe some of them are watching that said, I've prayed for this so many times and nothing's ever happened. I've never spoken tongues. I've never, I'm, I'm frustrated because I'm stuck. What are some other ways that people can really get the Holy Ghost sure. and, and get that baptism? Yeah, faith. I mean, you Mom. can't receive anything from heaven without faith. You can't get, think of how powerful faith is. You can't get saved without faith. Come on. By grace through faith are we saved. It is the work of God, the gift of God, lest any man should boast. You can't get healed without faith. Mark chapter 5, the Bible says that when Jesus turned to the woman with the issue of blood, he said that, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Mm. You, can't, uh, you can't stand without faith. The Bible says by faith we stand. Scripture says in 1 John 5 that this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. You can't get victory without faith. And it also overflows into the realm of being filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't receive the Holy Spirit without faith. It took faith. You think of it Come for on. Acts chapter 1 and 2 for those disciples to hear Jesus say, you know, Luke 24 rather, tarry in the city of Jerusalem yep. until, and in Acts 1 he said, that because uh, they were asking, when are you going to restore the kingdom? And he said, hey, it's not for you to know the times or the epochs which the Father has set by his own authority. However, you shall be, uh, you shall receive power yes. after that the Holy Ghost has come on you. It took faith for them mm. to gather for the next, you know, think of it. That was day 40. So the next 10 days, they gathered every single day in the upper room and just waited. Now, I want to make something clear to you. Because I hear a lot of people saying, we need to tarry, we need to Come tarry. Come on, go there. But the whole tarrying message actually is irrelevant after Acts chapter 2. They were told to tarry because the Holy Ghost was not yet sent. Jesus said in John 14, 26 and 27, that I will go to heaven and I will pray the Father. He will send you another helper of the same kind. He will send you the Holy Spirit and he shall be with you always. Jesus um, when he ascended on high, he came before the throne of God with his blood. He obtained our eternal rede redemption. But after that, he prayed the Father. Jesus said, I will pray the Father and he will send you the Holy yes. Spirit. We That Holy Spirit was sent in Acts chapter 2. There's nothing in the entire book of Acts that suggests that the Holy Spirit went back up to heaven and we need to wait any longer. That's why Jesus said in Luke chapter 11 when he was teaching on prayer, if you par evil parents know how to give good things to your children, how much more will the Father give? It's a, yes. He is a gift. The Holy Ghost is a gift. I'm going to say something. I want this to get, I want this to be ingrained in your spirit. I want to tattoo this on your heart tonight. The Jesus is the greatest gift God ever gave the world. Mm. Jesus is the greatest gift that God ever gave the world. But the Holy Ghost is the greatest gift God ever gave the church. Mm. And he is a gift. You don't have to, I love what you said, we're not beggars, we're yep. believers. Yep. We don't have to beg. We don't have to sit and tarry. You know, in Acts chapter 19... Paul shows up to Ephesus yes. and they didn't receive anything because they hadn't heard. Not because God was holding off wow, this blessing. Wow. They just haven't heard. Because faith begins where the will of God is heard, known, and believed. And so I want you to set your faith and expectation right now that God's going to fill you. That God's going to do it not in 10 years from now, not 10 months from now, not 10 minutes from now. But right now as we pray that the mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit will be loosed upon, your, upon your vessel and you shall be filled with fresh oil. David, you know, he used this faith. Psalm 92, I will be anointed with fresh oil. You have to start saying, I want you to write that in the comment section. I will be anointed with fresh oil oil. Well, brother, I got, already got filled with the Holy Ghost in uh, 1987. Well, do you know that in Acts chapter 2, they got filled with the Holy Ghost? And in Acts chapter 4, they got filled again Come with on. the Holy Ghost? 
They pray. Come on. They realize I can't I cannot live off yesterday's experience and yesterday's encounter with God. I need a fresh fire. I need a fresh encounter. I need a fresh touch and baptism in the Holy Ghost. If I'm going to be the believer God wants me to be in the land and be a voice piece for his word in my generation, then I need I need fresh oil. I need fresh oil. Isaiah needs yes. fresh oil. It's prideful to think that you can just get along on your on on yesterday's oil. I need fresh oil today. Yes, let's pray. Father, we pray right now. Lord, many of you are waiting. You've been asking. Just begin to pray. If you pray in the Spirit, you can pray in the Spirit as we pray for you. Father, we pray that you would pour out your Spirit as you said you would on all flesh, God. We pray for every single person listening that, Lord, you would pour out your Spirit upon them, that they would receive now the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Lord, we pray that you would light these people on fire. Lord, light our houses on fire. Light our families on fire. Light our marriages on fire. Lord, light our businesses on fire. We pray, God, our coworkers would experience this. We pray that the people we go to school with would experience this. We just pray, Holy Spirit, right now, touch them with your anointing and your power and your fire. In Jesus' name, we just pray, Lord, that they would receive it. We believe right now that God is pouring out his spirit on all flesh. Some of you are going to begin to prophesy. Maybe you're in a room with multiple people. You let that prophecy out. Begin to speak out right now. Maybe you're maybe you have tongues that are coming out. Begin to pray in the spirit. Robo shambanda bosante. Himba raba sumbam di adamando bosa. Himba raba shanda adamando bosum di adamando bosante. Just begin to open your mouth. Don't be passive right now. Don't be passive right now. Begin to open up your mouth when you pray in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost has a prayer meeting on the inside of you. The Bible says when you know not what to pray, pray in the Spirit, and the Spirit will make utterance on your behalf, will make groans that can't be uttered. He'll pray on your behalf. The Bible says to build yourself up by praying in the Holy Ghost. So right now, just begin to pray in the Spirit. Just begin to ask for the Holy Ghost to pour out on you, Lord. Pour out on our families right now. Lord, I ask you. Come on, ask Him right now. I ask you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire. Pour your fire out on me, Lord. Baptize me in rivers of fire. In Jesus' name, Lord, do what only you can do. Touch lives right now. Touch Lisa, touch James, touch Gary, touch Leona, touch Ricky right now, Lord. Touch them, Eve. I just say be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Bonnie, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Some of you need a fresh touch. You're dry, you're stale, you've lost the fervor. Ask him, fill me again, Lord. Come on, pray that right now. Fill me again, Lord. Baptize me again, Lord, in the Holy Ghost. Fill me again, Lord. If you have kids in the room, lay your hands on your kids. Lay your hands on them. Ask the Lord to fill them. You know, one of the prayers we pray every single night with our kids is, I have them repeat after me, and we ask the Lord to fill us every single night. My kids say, fill me with the Holy Spirit. And then they pray that God would fill, you know, one of my daughters always prays, Lord, fill everyone in the world with the Holy Spirit, right? I'm not going to tell her, oh, theologically, we're just believing, we just pray. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. This should be a day daily prayer. Start praying that every night with your kids or every morning. Lord, fill us with the Holy Ghost. Fill us with the power of God. Empty me out. Some of you need to get emptied out. You're already too full of yourself. I hear the Lord saying this, I'm knocking you off the throne. I hear the Lord saying, I'm knocking you off the throne. You know, when there's two kings in a kingdom, that's a war, causes war. And some of you are at war within yourselves with God because you're the king of your kingdom and you're trying to have Jesus be the king and you're clashing. There could only be one king. And tonight, Lord, I declare that you are the only one on the throne of my life. You are the only one on the, on the throne of my heart. There's, a, there's really only room for one king on the throne of your heart. Tonight, make Jesus your king. Not just, he's my savior, he's my my master. Make him the king of your life and say, Lord, empty me out of arrogance. Empty me out of pride. Because prayerlessness is pride at the highest level. You not praying is saying you don't need God. That's pride. Lord, empty us out tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit. We need you, God. Fill us with the Holy Ghost and fire tonight. Fill us with the Holy Ghost and fire tonight. Thank you, Lord. Touch hearts, God, tonight. Touch minds tonight, God, right now. We pray gift of prophecy, stir up. Some of you have never received any spiritual gifts. Come on, right now is your night. Receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost. There's 4,000 of you. Imagine all of you guys getting these gifts stirred up. This is what 1 Corinthians says. Pursue spiritual gifts and desire spiritual gifts. 
So God is not going to turn you down. He wants us That's to right. do this. Come on. People say, don't focus on the gifts. Well, yeah. the Bible tells me to. The Bible says to pursue it. So tonight I'm pursuing spiritual gifts. Father, I pray that you would stir up the word of knowledge in people tonight. Amen. I pray you'd stir up the gift of prophecy tonight in people. I Amen. pray you would stir up right now, God, just gifts. He said, desire prophecy. I, I want you to speak in tongues. I want you to have words of knowledge. Paul said, I want you to do these. He says, but the highest is I desire you to prophesy. I want to prophesy. Say that right now in the chat or say that in your own words. I want to I want prophesy. To I want to lay hands on the sick. I want words of knowledge. I want words of wisdom. God, I want to be used of you. God, empty me out. I'm a, I'm a vessel. Isaiah chapter 6, who can go? Here I am, Lord, send me. Tonight, Lord, I'm available for the Holy Spirit's gifts to flow out of me. These are not tools. These are not toys. These are tools. They're not for entertainment. They're for equipping. Stir up the gifts. You want to just pray that Holy Ghost over people? Absolutely. Stir up the gifts in us, Lord. Bible says in Acts Lord. 2, in the last days, says God, which days we're in, that I will pour out of my spirit on. on all flesh. Young, old, doesn't matter what color you are, doesn't matter what gender you are, male or female, God is pouring out his spirit. It's his end yes. time program on, on all flesh. Don't count yourself out because you said you're too old. Don't count yourself out because you said you're too young. People that always make excuses like that, they're too young, and then when they age, they're too old. They wow. never find a place to actually put their hand to the plow and start moving. But I believe that God is flushing out all those misconceptions right now, and he's opening up your heart you to receive this mighty today. baptism in the Holy Spirit. In the last day, says God, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. Young men will see visions. I believe God's putting visions Come in on. people's hearts right now. I believe God is putting... Is He's depositing, installing his heavenly assignment, the heavenly vision. Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. I believe heavenly visions are being birthed into your spirit right now. You're not going to have a status quo, boring, lukewarm Christianity. Mm. The fire of God is burning into you right now, into your spirit. The thing that God wants you to accomplish. You shall be great in your generation. You shall make noise. That's what the Holy Ghost yes. does. Acts 2. And when this sound Found a cure. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. They came rushing in from all directions. The sound of the Holy Ghost hitting your spirit today is going to cause people to just come and just get, you're going to have the pe your generation's attention in the name of Jesus Christ. I loose right now from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, the mighty baptism in the Holy Ghost. In the name that is above every name, you said, I will give the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are not waiting. We are not tarrying. Just lift up your hands right now, wherever you're at. Open up your heart and say, Father, I thank you. I receive the Holy Spirit in his fullness. I receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, I unlock the gift of tongues in your life. Some of you are praying in the Holy Spirit for the very first time. Some of you are speaking in tongues for the very first time. I know it. The last time we did something like this yep. together, I keep getting messages of people getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, that they got filled yep. on that broadcast. I'm telling you right now, lives are changing forever. You will never be the same. You will never be the same in Jesus' name. You will not look the same. Just like when Moses came down from the mountain, they said, can you please put a, a veil over you? The light, the glory is too bright on you. Hallelujah. Wow. The glory of God shall be seen in you. Isaiah 60, in the last days, that darkness will abound and deep darkness will cover all the earth. But the scripture says... Arise and shine, hallelujah, for yeah, my light that. and my glory shall be seen on you. I speak the glory of God on you right now in Jesus' mighty name. You are being changed and you shall be an yes. agent of change everywhere you go. God is dispatching from this broadcast a generation of SEAL Team 6 Christians that are going to be a terror to the kingdom of hell from this moment onward in Jesus' name. I want you to write in the comment section if you just got filled, I want you to say I got filled. Thank Lord. You, Lord. Lord, desire. Give us desire to pray, God. Give us desire to Hallelujah. read the Word of God. Some of you have desires to smoke. You have desires to drink. You have desires to watch Netflix and scroll on TikTok. But God is taking your desire from living for this world. God's unraveling that tentacle of Babylon that's been wrapped oh, around yeah. you, choking the life out of you. And God is giving you new desires. 
God is taking your desires for worldly pleasure, junk food spiritually, and God says, I am giving you a desire to read, to pray, to fast, a conviction. Some of you are like, oh man, I don't even know what this is. I've never been convicted. Lord, we pray that you would convict us of sin and of righteousness. Holy Ghost, do what only you can do. Lord, give us that power. Release that power in us, God. Release that supernatural, life-changing power and authority in us, God. We pray, Lord, that we would believe your word. Some of you don't realize you haven't believed the word of God because you don't have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is what searches out the scripture and illuminates the truth of the word of God. You ever wonder why the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witness, and they all use the Bible? How are they gonna use our Bible? Because the Bible says the Spirit will lead you into the truth. So without the Spirit, the Bible can be twisted, contorted, but the Holy Ghost illuminates the Word of God and makes the Word of God alive in you. I remember reading the Bible for the first time after receiving the Holy Spirit, because I was raised in church, and I read it after receiving the Holy Ghost, and the Bible was alive, it was active. But how is it when I was 13 years old, I read the Bible and it was boring. It was stale to me because I didn't have the Holy Ghost to bring that flashlight and illuminate the truth of the scripture. Some of you right now are getting a desire to read the word of God. For the first time ever, you've never desired God's word. And now it's becoming exciting to you. Now there's a passion stirring up in you. Some of you are getting a passion for soul winning. You don't, you've no. never tear, you've never wept, you've never cried, you've never interceded. You don't stay up late at night crying out for your family. It, it doesn't even affect you that your friends and family are going to hell. But God is gonna give you a Holy Ghost burden for the lost and the broken. Some of you won't be able to sleep. I pray some of you won't be able to sleep tonight because you're up praying with a burden for the lost and hurting of this generation. Lord, I can't. I can't just live my life normal when my generation is dying. I can't just, business as usual can't continue when my generation's called the fentanyl generation, the suicide generation, the OCD generation, the addicted generation. I speak over this generation that we are the Jesus generation, that we are the revival generation, that we are the Holy Ghost filled generation, that the devil might be filling people with his spirit, but God says, I'm filling people with my spirit, that God, God's not working in plan B. This is plan A. God says, I will pour out my spirit. Like, well, my pastor, it's not your pastor's spirit. It's not some religious guy on YouTube who says, oh, the gifts aren't for today. Oh, this is not for today. And then he goes and makes fun of speaking in tongues. It's not his gifts. It's not his Holy Spirit. So it doesn't matter what he says. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So the spirit of God belongs to God, searches out the deep things of God. So we're not waiting on my pastor's permission if I could pray in tongues or I could be full of the Holy Ghost. I'm stepping right over tonight into the Holy of Holies. The veil has been torn. You've been given a backstage pass. You have all access to the kingdom of heaven. And God says you are actually seated. Think about Come where on. God puts you. TJ, he could put you anywhere. He could put you in front of the Crystal Lake. He could put you on the, uh, on the, he says, no, I, you have been seated with Christ, not with the seraphim, not with the 24 elders, not with an angel. You've been seated with Christ in heavenly places, in heavenly dimensions. You are, friend, your citizenship is heaven. You're not under a principality or power. Oh, this principality is in my neighborhood. Friend, you are far above Come every on. power and principality. See. You got the Holy Ghost. You don't live subject to the devil. You're not living reactionary. I'm not waiting on the devil to come take knock on my door. I'm knocking on his door. You know, TJ said something funny yesterday. He said, no longer will you look under your bed for the devil, but the devil will look under his bed for you. We are here to torment darkness. We're not afraid of no witch. Oh, there's a witch at the church. We don't care. We got the power of the Holy Ghost. And so some of you tonight, 4,000 of you on here, praise the Lord, are getting baptized with the fire of the Holy Ghost. God is pouring out literally hot lava in the spirit on you. He's pouring out his spirit on you. And God is going over the barriers of religion. Well, I wasn't raised this way. Well, guess what? You were raised wrong. I hate to be the guy to tell you. Well, my church, praise the Lord, we're not at your church tonight. Praise the Lord that we're in a, a place where we believe what the Bible says. There's no end to the Holy Ghost. It wasn't the, the gifts of the apostles. It was the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Right. So those gifts are, are stir, stirring right now. Some of you don't know, but this week, you're gonna start prophesying. This week, you're gonna be sitting at work and then God's gonna give you a word of knowledge for the guy next to you. God's gonna give you a word of wisdom. You're gonna get supernatural wisdom and go, I know I'm not this smart. How in the world did I get this? And it's the Holy Ghost giving it to you. Some of you, 
You're going to walk by somebody sick and all of a sudden you're going to start feeling something say, go pray for that person. And that gift of healing is going to stir up. Some of you, the gift of faith, what you couldn't believe God for yesterday, today you're going to have the faith to believe God for. God is stirring up spiritual gifts right now. He's stirring up. Let's also pray for, and you can pray whatever you want, but let's also pray for those that are sick in body. Let's pray that God would heal them. And then we're going to pray after that. We'll pray deliverance. and We're going to cast out some demons. But let's just pray, man. There's so many of you sick in the chat right now. I'm not even going to tell you type one if you're sick because it'll freeze our whole thing because there's so many sick people. But I believe there's coming a day where everyone will be made well, where there'll be no sick among us. Come on. Jesus would not have went to the whipping post, took 39 lashes so that you could be healed if he didn't want you healed. So as we pray tonight for healing, and we'll tag team this, we're not going like, oh, well, God, if it's your will, we already know it's his will. Psalms 103, all sickness, all disease. Mark 16, you will lay hands on the sick. We know this is the will of God. We're not here to debate and argue it. So we're going to pray and we're going to command your body to be healed tonight in Jesus name. And this is going to be crazy because some of you, you don't even know what it's like to not be in pain. You have gone so many years that your identity is pain. Your family doesn't even invite you out anymore. And this is a word of knowledge for someone because they know you're in too much pain to go. You're like, man, I can't get out of the house. How are you going to witness to people if you're constantly in pain? How are you going to evangelize if you're always under some sickness and some disease? And then you believe that it's God's will for your life. You believe God wants you to be sick in body. Now, do we know why God doesn't heal everyone? We can't sit here and go, I know why you didn't get healed. We don't know. We just know we're called to pray for the sick and we know God wants to do it. And we leave the results up to God. We're not the ones doing the work. We're the ones praying and believing and commanding as Jesus told us to, but ultimately it's God that does the miracle. So if you're sick in body tonight, if you're deaf, if you have a disease, we believe tonight as we pray, not by our, our strength, not by our might, but by the spirit, says the Lord, the Holy Spirit, who is the healer in the earth, is going to heal your body tonight in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible is a book that compiles the thoughts of God Come on. concerning different things concerning our salvation, concerning healing our body. The Bible addresses every single matter and uh, situation and scenario and problem that man faces. Talks about addiction, talks about sin, talks about yep. those things. And so the Bible also contains the thoughts of God when it comes to healing. And there's pretty much just, there's like four main reasons that you could absolutely trust and believe that God wants to heal you yesterday. Come on. One is you look at God in the Old Testament, Exodus 15, 26, he revealed himself as Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals you. Wow. Exodus 23, 25, the Bible says, if you'll serve the Lord your God, he'll bless your bread and your water, and he'll take sickness out of your come midst. On. Deuteronomy 7 says, I'll no longer lay any disease upon you, which have come on the Egyptians, but I'll lay them on those that hate you. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, that he bore our sickness, yes. carried our pains. By his stripes, you are healed. So in the Old Testament, you know, if we're going to believe all the names of God, Jehovah Tzikednu, God is my righteousness. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is here. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. Then we have to also believe that Jehovah Rapha, the yes. Lord, my healer, is also still instated, that he hasn't changed, just like he hasn't changed from being our righteousness, just like he hasn't changed from being our uh, a very present help in time of trouble. He hasn't changed from being our shepherd who said you will not lack. Then he hasn't changed when it comes to his healing power and his Come healing on. will for you. So you see him reveal himself in the Old Testament as healer. Flip over to the New Testament. Jesus comes and the Bible says in Acts 10 38, you know of Jesus of Nazareth, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good, healing all, Come on. healing all who were oppressed by the devil. The devil is the oppressor. Mm. Jesus is the healer. Everything Jesus did was a revelation of the Father's will. How do we know that? In John 14, Philip said, show us the Father and it's sufficient for us. Jesus said, have I not been with you long enough and yet you still haven't known me, Philip. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Come on. You have seen the Father. Jesus is the will of God in flesh. Hebrews 1, 3. Jesus is the exact representation of the will and nature of God. You flip over to the book of Acts. He continued that healing uh, yep. program. Acts 3, the man lame at the gate called Beautiful. He lifts him up. Silver and gold we don't have, meaning we don't have enough money to cure paralysis. They don't have enough money to this day to cure paralysis. But such as we do have, we have the name 
above every other name, the name of Jesus. Then you flip over to the church, 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says God has set gifts of healing in the church. His program has not changed. He's Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And as I said before, the way to plug into this tonight is just faith. It's simple. It's faith. It, what is faith? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He just expounded on it. I, I expounded on it. Now you know the word of God. Could you imagine if I preached salvation this way? Sometimes God does not want people saved. Come on. Sometimes yep. God is taking you through sin because he wants glory. Wow. Sometimes, you know, the day of salvation is over. It, who would get saved? Who would repent? Instead, we're strong on it. We yep. And we only... People are convinced after just one scripture, John yep. three sixteen. Yep, that's it. That settles the account. I just listed like seven scriptures. He listed like seven scriptures. That's fourteen scriptures that you can take to the bank and receive healing in your body right now. And that's what we're gonna pray yes. in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, go ahead. Let's pray for them to be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Type whatever Christ. you have in the chat and you need healing of, and we're gonna minister after deliverance to the chat specifically. But just go ahead and put it in there because there's thousands of people praying and I know families right now are in their living room I literally know them praying for the chat so they're it's not just us praying for the chat there's families with the chat on screen and they're also praying for you in the chat so put what you need prayer for in the chat and again later we'll have you do it again and we're going to pray specifically for those things but right now whatever sickness you're going through nerve damage pain disease put it in the chat as TJ prays and we're just going to boom we're going to pray for those things and God's going to heal those tonight in the name of Jesus as a authorized dealer of healing by the Great Commission. For you said, Mark 16, they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. To go and tell people about Jesus and not minister to the sick is illegal. And so by that word, I take authority over every sickness and disease in anybody's body. Fibromyalgia, I curse you at the root in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, any stomach issues, nausea, stomach cancers, in the name of Jesus, I curse your work. As Jesus commanded the fig tree to wither up, I command that yes. thing to wither up Go. from the root in Jesus' name. I take authority over anxiety and depression and any type of mental torment. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I bind the working of the devil in your mind, and I loose the peace of God and the joy of the Holy Ghost. For the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and mm. joy in the Holy Spirit. I curse so many people writing cancer. I yep, curse cancer. cancer. That foul Go, spirit of out. death. You foul spirit of infirmity. I command you to leave their body now in the name of Jesus. For that is the name that is above the name of cancer. I take authority over it. I command a report, a good report to come in. And any damage the cancer has done to your body, I command the resurrection life of Jesus Christ to overtake your body and quicken your mortal body. Whatever the cancer has done to your body, whatever any type of disease has done to any organ in your body, I don't speak restoration of the organ. I speak a brand new Thank organ. You, Lord. I Do speak it, a, brand, a creative miracle in your lungs. If you've been a smoker and as a result, it's, it's just messed up your lungs. I speak brand new lungs. I speak a whole new pulmonary system in Jesus' name. Those of you that have heart problems and heart issues, issues and any type of clogging of arteries in the name of Jesus. Yes. I pray the oil of the spirit to go and unclog anything in yes. your heart that's been clogged up in Jesus name. Every artery gets cleared up now by the drain of the Holy Ghost in the mm. name of Jesus. I, c I command asthma. Yes. Asthma to come off children and adults that have difficulty breathing in Jesus name, in the name of Jesus Christ. And we, we, we thank you, Father. We thank you that we know it's your will to do all this. And we know that if it's your will, that you already heard us in what we've prayed right now. Thank you, Lord, that testimonies are already springing up. I thank you that bodies are already being yes. touched. I thank you that the, even the feeling of pain has lifted off your body now in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you, Lord, that people are going to leave this broadcast with a total turnaround. Come on. Total turnaround. Permanent deliverance, not just I got better for six weeks, not mm. just six hours. I'm not a Tylenol symptoms uh, allevi for, alleviated for eight hours. I mean a permanent victory in that area in your body. In Jesus' mighty name, we declare it done by faith. 
In Jesus' name, we command bodies to come in alignment with the word of God. All autoimmune diseases, we command you to leave bodies now. We're not asking, we are commanding sickness. You must go. You have no place in this body. You have no place in this body. Some of you need to be, begin to pray for yourself and command that sickness to leave your body in Jesus' name. All I know a lot of you are writing, you have gum disease and mouth disease and teeth that are infected and hurting and, and you're sick in your mouth. We command all mouths to be healed. Lord, I pray right now that teeth and nerves would be healed in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, all those that are struggling with whatever mental illness, which we're gonna go into deliverance here in a little bit, but I wanna deal with the health side of it. You have some type of chemical imbalance or you're born a certain way. We just pray, Lord, that you would bring healing to minds, to brains. In Jesus' name, God, wherever there's a chemical imbalance, I pray the Holy Ghost would balance the chemicals tonight in Jesus' mighty name. We pray that eyes would be open, cataracts, gum disease, ringing in the ears. That's a huge one tonight. I just pray, Lord, that ringing would go now in Jesus' name. That ringing would go now in Jesus' mighty name. Every sore in the mouth, every cancerous tumor, Go now in Jesus' name. And some of you guys are writing stuff in here that is clearly demonic, which we're gonna take care of too. But right now, we wanna pray for physical healing over ears, deafness, right now, blindness. We command eyes to be open. We command ears to be open in Jesus' name. Right now, Father, we just pray all chronic headaches, sinus uh, infections and sinus diseases and sinus issues and chronic migraines. We just command those to go now. We say be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed right now. Healing, come to your house. Bone cancer over Deborah. We come out of her now in Jesus' name. Eczema, we come against that disease. Lupus, right now, every vocal cord disease right now. In Jesus' name. Every dry eyes allergy, all these migraines in Jesus' name. Scoliosis, Father, we pray. And you know, some of you I know right now, there's unbelief in your heart. You're like, you're, you mock, you go, how could God heal? You believe for your salvation that you're gonna die and God's gonna bring you all the way up to heaven, but you don't believe that right now God can heal your body? Like you believe that God can split the Red Sea, you have no problem believing that, but you don't believe that God can remove a tumor out of your body. You believe that God created the earth in six days, but don't believe that God can break, break, take that cancer right out of your body tonight. I'm telling you, some of you Come need on. some faith tonight. Some of you believe some real radical stuff that God do, did, but don't believe that God can move now. Jesus said, his kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, let your kingdom come tonight. Celiac disease, go now in Jesus' name. Osteoporosis, go now. Kidney disease, go now in Jesus' name. Joint pain, go now in Jesus' name. Stagnation, go now in Jesus' name. Arthritis, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray right now, there's some of you that you have uh, obesity because there is a, a hormone defici deficiency in your body. I forgot what it's called, where your body doesn't create a certain hormone and you gain weight super easily. I had an old friend that had that. I pray God that you would heal that gland right now. Whatever gland that is causing that extreme obesity, you're barely eating, but you're gaining tons of weight, your body's swelling up. I pray right now be healed in Jesus' name. Is it the thyroid? I'm not yeah, sure. Thyroid. We pray thyroids healed right now in Jesus' name. Bladder issues, kidney issues, cyst ovaries, infertility, I just say over you, you will have children in Jesus' name. You will, in Jesus' mighty name, have children and have a family. Amen. In Jesus' name, Lord, bring healing right now. Spine alignment, spine alignment right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, heal, Lord, heal, Lord, heal. Right now, every single person, God, we just pray the healing power of God. We command sickness to go. You don't belong in the people of God, sickness. Right. You do not belong on the people of God. This is not the will of God for their life. The word clearly declares that. And so you must go now. I also want to pray if you want me to go into deliverance now or if you have anything you want to add for the sickness before we kind of move into deliverance. No, you covered it. I wanted to, I was going to say about um um reproductive. Yeah, yeah. And I I really believe Let's pray that, for that again. I really believe There's that many the Lord, in the chat that are typing that. The Lord is going to end the siege of miscarriage. Yep. In Come Jesus on. name. I really feel yep. like the Lord is going to end this uh buffeting reoccurring miscarriages that you've that you've suffered in your past the bible says in exodus 23 26 none of your women shall miscarry mm. none of your women shall miscarry that's a promise that's a covenant promise from heaven wow. i curse miscarriage yes in jesus name you shall carry your child to full term yes. in the name of jesus you shall not drop your fruit before it's time your child shall not come forth for trouble your child shall be a fruitful 
olive tree planted around your children. Anybody that's watching now that you've had a hard time conceiving, the doctor said, your, your womb's just not set for it. You'll never have wow. children. Come on. I reverse I that. that report in Jesus' name. You shall be a fruitful mother of children in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you shall conceive this very year. Uh, man, just like Elijah. On, I feel it. Elijah, Elijah said uh, to, to Hannah, Elijah said to, or Eli, sorry. Eli said to Hannah, by this time next year, you'll have your child. If I feel to say that to some people that are watching me on, on live and on the replay. By this time next year, you'll, have, you'll be holding your very own Isaac. You will hold your Samuel in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Open wounds, God. Yes. And come against all miscarriage right now in Jesus' name. The devil is a liar. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for healing bodies. I want to pray also, guys, for those that need deliverance. I want you right now to begin to, and you guys have done this before, but begin to deal with all the unforgiveness, every root and every door the enemy would have. You know, the Bible says unforgiveness. God actually turns you over to tormentors. And we know that mm -hmm. we don't know that that specifically means demons, because I want to make sure I never take a verse out of context, but we know that demons are tormentors. We know that unforgiveness gives a stronghold. And Paul talks about this. He says, if there's unforgiveness, if you don't forgive, you give the devil an advantage over you. In fact, Paul even says, like, if you're having an argument or you're having ought with your spouse, take care of it before the sun goes down so that you don't wake up with the devil in your bed, so that you don't have give the devil an open door, a stronghold, or an advantage. Give no place for the devil. Oh, Some yeah. of you right now have demons living in you, and God wants to deliver you. God wants to break that. You know, there's three main ministries that Jesus had. Number one was preaching the gospel. Number two was healing those that were sick in body. And then number three, in no particular order, was driving out demons. This was a major ministry. It wasn't a side thing. It wasn't a one-time event. You look at Mark 1, Jesus comes on the scene, preaches in the synagogue, and then doesn't just preach the word, but displays authority over unclean spirits. You know, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is in Luke chapter 10, where the 72 disciples come back and they say this one statement. I love this, TJ. They say this, even the demons obey us in your name. Think about that statement. For the Old Testament, the people were in bondage. And then in the New Testament, the bondage was in the people. In the Old Testament, Jesus brought them out of bondage, or God brought them out of bondage. In the New Testament, Jesus brought the bondage out of them. I'm telling you, friend, Jesus steps on the scene. No one had casted out demons before. This is the unique ministry to, to Christ. And Jesus comes, and with his authority, even the demons obey in his name. And this was not Jesus saying that. This was disciples that Jesus conferred his authority upon. And then here's the beauty. Mark chapter 16 says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. What's the first sign of a believer? In my name, they shall, not they might, not if they feel it, they shall cast out devils. So tonight, we shall cast out demons. Tonight, we are gonna command spirits to leave, whether you need to repent. Some people call it renounce, some people call it repent. The Bible says many times to renounce the works of darkness. The Bible also says repent of your sins, so I say do them both, renounce and repent. Jesus said, unless you renounce your old life, you cannot be my disciple. So renouncing is you turning away, saying, Satan, you have no more power over me. You have no more authority over me. You have no more strength over me. Some of you are slamming the door on the devil like he's selling solar. You're slamming that door saying, I don't want you at my house. I don't want you at my door. And as I pray, the devil is gonna come up out of you. The, the spirit of, 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 of depression, the spirit of anxiety. Now, some of you are like, oh, I had a demon say it was Satan. No, it's saying it's a representative of Satan. The devil's not living in you. Trust me, the devil is more important things to than to live in us. But these spirits who are the devil's minions, they live inside of people and God wants to drive those out. Matthew 12 says, when the demon goes out of the person, he says, I'm gonna go back to my home, which I came from. You better tell the devil tonight, I am not your home. You think I'm your home? These demons think I'm their home? You need to speak tonight out of your mouth, Satan, I am not your home. It is time to pack up your bags. I am evicting you. I am the sheriff of the Holy Ghost and I'm evicting you from this house. Matthew 12 lets us know that we are spiritual houses, that unclean spirits live inside and God wants to drive those things out of you tonight. And notice we drive demons out. We don't ask demons out. 
We don't counsel demons out. We don't medicate demons out. We are That's driving right. them out. So whatever it, specific spirit or thing you might feel like you're dealing with, I want you to type it in the chat. And, I, and many of you earlier were saying anorexia, bulimia. I don't believe that's a sickness. I believe that's a demon because I've seen people over and over. I had a girl on the podcast two weeks ago that God delivered her from that. And I believe God can deliver you tonight. I don't just believe it. I know it. I know God can deliver you tonight. So go ahead and put that in the chat. I want you to deal with your unforgiveness verbally, verbally say, I forgive. Whether it was an uncle, an aunt, a cousin that molested you, that raped you, that abused you, that verbally abused you. I want you right now to verbally forgive them so you break that legal right. I want you to renounce addiction. All you're gonna do is I renounce addiction. I renounce anxiety. I don't want this anymore. These demons must leave me. I renounce isolation. I renounce right now witchcraft, all Ouija boards, all new age, all seeing mediums. I renounce right now all control. I renounce all perversion, all confusion. Come on, just speak it out right now. Join in this. I renounce every familiar spirit. I renounce right now all disease in my body, spirits of infirmity. You know, Luke 13, there was a spirit of infirmity. And Jesus said, didn't this, this woman deserve to be loosed? Like, doesn't the world deserve this? Sure. Don't, don't you deserve to be delivered tonight? So right now, just renounce those things. Spirit of Python, Spirit of Leviathan, Jezebel, whatever it is, just renounce those things. And then I'm going to start praying and coming against those things. So right now, not in Isaiah's name. I have no power. TJ has no power. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah. I command the spirit of anxiety to leave bodies. I command the spirit of perversion to leave bodies. I command the spirit of homosexuality, yes, I said it, to leave bodies right now in Jesus' name. I command right now every spirit that thinks it's married to us, every spiritual spouse that thinks that they're somehow connected to you and they won't leave, you must go in Jesus' name. I command every foul spirit, go into the abyss now. Do not pass on your assignments or your duties. Leave these bodies bodies now in Jesus name I command you to go now I command the spirit of laziness anxiety depression fear OCD ADHD right now spirit of anorexia spirit of bulimia spirit of religion go in Jesus name we command you to come up and out now every spirit of rage anger and destruction I bind you together now and I uproot you come out in Jesus name come out in Jesus name Every foul spirit must go right now. Every spirit of confusion, every sexually perverted spirit with animals, with children, whatever it is that you're going through, these perverted thoughts, I command those unclean, foul spirits to leave bodies right now in Jesus' name. Every mental illness, they said, oh, you're just schizophrenic, you're always gonna hear voices, I come against that report in Jesus' name. They said, you're always gonna see demons, I come against that in Jesus' name. I command that spirit of schizophrenia, go now in Jesus' name. I command the spirit of rejection. Guys, we're not here to argue, well, maybe this is medical. We already prayed for healing. So if it was medical, we prayed. This is the deliverance portion now where we're commanding those spirits to come out now. Go in the abyss, out of the mouth, and into the abyss in Jesus' name. Come right out of their mouth now. Leave their bodies now in Jesus' name. Every spirit attached to mental illness, every tarot card, every spirit that came in through tarot cards, every spirit that came in through rejection, every spirit that came in through trauma, I command the spirit of trauma, leave this house now. Come on, some of you have that spirit of trauma just hovering over your house. And we had that at our house before when our daughter was in the NICU. I know what that spirit's like. Some of you have that spirit of trauma hovering. It's causing you to be depressed. It's causing you to be anxious. You're up late at night. You can't sleep. That's that spirit of trauma. You're reliving the nightmare of what you went through. You're reliving the abuse. You're reliving the, ca the car accident. Some of you get in the car and you relive that car accident from 10 years ago. I come against that spirit of trauma now. The doctors say, oh, you have PTSD. I come against that spirit of trauma Jesus now. Name. Leave in Jesus' name. Spirit of perversion, leave in Jesus' name. Spirit of bitterness. Some of you are just so bitter all the time. Spirit of bitterness, go in Jesus' name. Every generational curse, we ask, Lord, that you would just break it right now with the blood of Jesus. We break the curse. My family, oh, somebody needs to speak this out tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. My family will not be cursed in Jesus' name. How can my family be cursed when they're already blessed? My right. family will not be cursed. My family is blessed. Amen. We break off the curse of poverty. We break off the Come curse on. of divorce. We break off the curse of, of teen pregnancy. We break off the curse of abortion. We break off the curse of anxiety. Well, my dad had it, my mom had it. Well, I won't have it in Jesus' name. My kids won't have it in Jesus' name. We break the curse tonight in Jesus' name. Satan, you're a liar and you're a loser and you must go in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, set him free. Holy Ghost, set him free. Go for it, TJ. Holy Ghost, set him free tonight, Lord. Deliver them. Every spirit. I love how the Bible says that he cast out the spirits with the finger of God. Come on. 
Not even his whole hand. That's how That's weak so cool. the devil is. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus. I felt something so Come strong on. when you said that spirit of poverty coming off people. The spirit, the poverty mm -hmm. mindset. Yep. That thing that just overtakes your brain where you can't seem to think that you'll ever advance yes. or increase, that you were born in it and you'll die in it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I uproot that demonic that demonic seed in your mind. In oh, Jesus' leave, name, any leave. spirit of poverty that's just plaguing your mind, any leave. spirit of, 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 uh, of resistance yep. with regards to your advancement, in the things of God, anything that's come against you. The Bible says, your enemy shall rise up one way, but be defeated before your face. I see every demon that had as is it, is it, its assignment to come against you, every demon's blueprint being burnt up, them being defeated tonight, and they're scattered seven ways. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit of OCD Go. and suicide and intrusive thoughts. And you foul demon of fear that plagues people's minds, yep. that gives them yep. thoughts that they don't want to have one Leave. after another. Every fiery dart, every demonic thought that is launched towards your mind by the shield of faith, it gets extinguished tonight. Come on. I put an end to this demonic harassment on your life. Yep. I put an end to any demonic bullying. I put an end to any demonic manipulation. In the name of Jesus, it ends tonight in Jesus' name. Anything that's been transgenerationally yes. passed down from mother, Broken. from grandfather to parent to you, and the devil's lied to that it'll come to your, your children and your children's children. The Bible says, Psalm 112, the generation of the righteous shall be blessed on the earth. I break every curse. I break every diabolical will concerning your life. Yep. The will of God shall prevail in you and your household. You and your house not only shall be saved, but shall taste, see, and enjoy the goodness of the Lord while you're yet in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus. In the yes. name of Jesus, all witchcraft, yep. any demonic Break it. spell. Break it. The curse without cause shall not alight. Come on. How can you curse whom God has blessed? The Lord has not renounced and therefore cannot be renounced. You become unrenounceable in Jesus' Come name. On. You become, uh, from today, like I said yesterday, not you looking under your bed, looking for the devil or whatever. From today, the devil looks under his bed. Seeing whether you're there in Jesus' Come name. On. In Jesus' name. Spirit of madness. Yes. Spirit of madness. In the name of Jesus. You foul spirit Leave. of insanity Leave. that disrupts people, people's sleep. In Jesus' name. Out. You shall lie down and sleep in safety, for the Lord shall sustain you. you God makes his beloved to dwell and uh, lie down in green pastures. He gives his beloved sleep. Any demon of, 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 uh, of, of uh, what do you call, what do they call that? Um, when you can't sleep. Insomnia. Insomnia. Yep. yep. Man, that's a demon. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Keeping you up at night. You will have, you will enjoy the best night of sleep you've ever had Jesus in your life name. tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus we uproot name. all these foul Jesus spirits Christ. tonight. You must go. All witchcraft Get spirits, you must go. And we pray tonight, guys, we don't just want to be delivered. We want to be deliverers. We want to be, if we're believers, we don't just want to keep going through deliverance to deliverance. We want to drive out devils. I speak over you that you will cast out demons in Jesus name that you will cast out demons in Jesus name that the devil is a liar that you will drive out demons that God is giving you a boldness we have all these videos and teachings on how to do it there's no more excuses but God give us the boldness that we will drive out demons from our friends from our family from our neighbors from our community God empower us to drive out devils right now in Jesus mighty name you can't have our kids. Some of you need to pray for your kids right now. Let's be honest. Let's pray. Let's pray right now for our kids. Okay. Father, break the spirit of rebellion off our kids. Break the spirit of anxiety off our kids. Break the spirit of fear off of our children right now. That's that seed of rebellion, that demon of rebellion, all these ungodly movies we expose them to. We pray, Lord, deliver them from that seed of rebellion right now. That, that violent spirit that comes over your kid, he starts hitting you in the grocery store going crazy, manifesting a demon, foaming at the mouth. 
We command that spirit to leave now in Jesus' name. Get off our kids. Some of you need to pray for your husband, your wife. Get off my wife. Get off my husband. In Jesus' mighty name, I take authority over my house. I'm the priest of my home. I, I'm, not, I'm, no, I'm not a jellyfish. I'm not some soft guy. I'm the priest of this house. Devil, you messed up coming to this house. You're going to pay for coming to this house. And we command you to leave our houses now in Jesus' name. Some of you men have opened up the door in your home to the devil. You better slam that door tonight. You better man up. You think, oh, no big deal. Up late at night, watching those movies, listening to that music. You're opening up a, a spiritual portal of darkness, letting unclean spirits invade your house and they're jumping on your kids. You better repent tonight and say, no more, no more, not today. I come against those spirits that I've let in. Come on guys, don't be all arrogant now. Almost 5,000 of you in here, There's, you're in here. Don't act like you're not in here. Lord, I forgive me, Lord, for opening doors. Forgive me, Lord, for not being the priest that I'm called to be in my home. I, I'm setting my foot down now. Devil, I've been letting you roam freely. I am putting my foot on the neck of the devil tonight. I'm coming against every foul spirit, every unclean power, every dark spirit that's in my home. I drive you out in Jesus' name. Some of you are, of course, many of you are playing this on your television in your house. Just begin to pray that. I drive every spirit out of this house in Jesus' name. This house doesn't belong to the devil. I'm not moving out because there's a demon. The demon's moving out because I'm here. Don't, I'm gonna sell my house. People write me, I'm gonna sell my house because there's spirits. Why don't you ca cast those spirits out? You today say, Lord, make this a house of prayer. This, this is a home of the Holy Ghost. Ain't no devil up in here. Every spirit must go. I'm anointing the doorways. I'm commanding these things. This house is not haunted. This house is Holy Ghost anointed. This house is not haunted. This house is full of the Holy Spirit. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. God, anoint homes today, God. Fill play. You're telling me God can't fill a house? You're telling me God can't fill a living room? You're telling me God can't fill a space? Ask him today. Don't just fill me, Lord. Fill my house. Fill my children's bedroom. Anoint God the rooms in Jesus' mighty name. Touch lives tonight in Jesus' name. Every spirit must go. Every foul spirit, we got you up against the ropes. You must go. You have no power. And guys, as we're praying, you pray too. You pray this too. These spirits have no power. I'm anointed. I'm bought by the blood of Jesus. These spirits can't stay in Jesus' name. They have no power over me in Jesus' name. Every squatter, these demons are squatters. Every demon must go tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, anoint homes with oil, anoint families, anoint parents, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Every room. Go ahead. Marriages, yes, in Jesus' yes. name. Any uh, right on. spirit of division, confusion that's trying to misinterpret uh, both of you yep. so that it's like there's never any, you're never on the same line. You're never on, there's always dis, disunity in the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that. I curse that. You shall not divorce. From what God has brought together, no man or no demon shall put asunder. I curse that in the name of Jesus Christ. Any demon of division, confusion, or distortion, trying to give you marital yes. distress, in Jesus' name, you have no legal right to remain. For they are blood-bought, blood-bought, redeemed, children of Abraham. Yes, yes. Jesus said, ought not this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has yep. bound these yep. 18 years, be loosed from this on the loose. Sabbath? I loose. loose you right now. I loose your marriage. Be loose. Your marriage shall be blessed. Your marriage shall be characterized by joy. Your marriage shall be characterized by peace. You shall be a model marriage in your generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Any woman, any man that's trying to step into that marriage, Come on. I, I, I put total disarray on that yep, plan yep. in the name of Jesus Christ. Their yep. efforts shall fail. All home wreckers that have been sent that seed filled of with adultery. the devil. Exactly. Come against that seed of adultery that's planted there. In Jesus' Come name. It, that, those plans get ruined now. In the name of Jesus. I feel, I feel to say this because this story just came into my spirit yeah, and I haven't flow. thought of Go this ahead. in a long time. Go ahead. We're flowing. Smith Wigglesworth once had a woman come to him and said, my husband wants nothing to do with me. He's, he's a drunk, he's angry, our marriage is on the rocks. And he said, take this cloth, anoint it with oil and put it under his pillow. And when, he went in, when she went and did that, the next day, actually it was midnight, it was, it was mid, mid, mid through the night, about 3 a.m., the guy was, he, she got woken up because he was on his knees praying repentance. And the spirit of God just came on. I feel the Lord yes, is do it, Lord. saying to some people here tonight, that you need to take that step of faith. You know, handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from Paul's body. 
and put on uh, yeah, those Acts that were 19. sick. Acts 19, 11, and the demons came out of them. I've, I've never given this word before, but I feel to give a specific word of instruction to some people. I want you to take a cloth, something anointed with oil, pray that deliverance prayer over it, put it under his, his, his pillow, put it in his pillow, however, and that is Come you on. loosing your faith. You're turning your faith loose by doing that. Yes, God, do it, Lord. Unusual miracles. Father, we pray tonight that we would see unusual miracles. Hallelujah. That means not normal, not ordinary, what we're used to seeing, something out of the ordinary, something unusual. And the Bible says, as, as T just said, even handkerchiefs were being laid on those that were sick, and it says those that had demons, and the people were getting healed and delivered. Imagine, you know, we go through all this to do deliverance, and I love it. There's no method. There's no right way. We pray. We believe. Everyone has their own little method. But imagine we not even praying. Imagine you put a, a handkerchief on your demonized kid. You don't even say a word. They just, a handkerchief, and the demon starts, rah, screams out of them and comes out. Like that's the unusual we're believing for. That's the unusual power of God. And some of you say, oh, that's just foolish. Well, guess what? Don't expect to see that then. If you think it's foolish, think it's foolish, but don't expect to see the miracle. We know there's no special power in a handkerchief. It's an act of faith. It's an yeah. act of faith saying, God, I'm attaching my faith to a physical action and I'm believing that tonight you're gonna to do the unusual. I wanna also begin to put your prayer requests in the chat. And I want you to do it this way, don't start yet. I want you to put your name, okay? Because a lot of you, your screen name, something, something crazy. I don't even understand some of these screen names out here. So make sure you put your actual name and then put needs healing of, needs deliverance of. Put your prayer request with your name so that we can read it and pray it. Don't put something where we can't even read it. Put your name what who it is and then what you need the prayer for don't make it you know four sentences if you make a paragraph we're not gonna be able to read it because the chat there's five thousand people in here the chat's moving so fast but we want to just pray with faith and just speak these things out put them out there believe that god's hearing our prayers and answering of course god knows every prayer of course god knows every comment but we're just going to begin to pray for some of these um we pray right now for alistar deliverance of fear spirit of fear come out samya migraines be healed in jesus name vakash we pray for salvation over vakash that you will be saved in jesus name andrea we come against that poverty spirit right now be delivered katrina we command your stomach to be healed in jesus name kendra we pray for healing right now Iker, we pray for healing in your body in Jesus' name. Austin Hall, we say be delivered in Jesus' name. Austin, I know you're in here, man. Be delivered tonight. Every spirit must go. We pray right now in Jesus' name. Susan Burke, we say be healed and be restored. Melanie, I pray healing on your side, that tumor. And we come against the cancer there, Melanie. We say be healed in Jesus' name. Over Giovanni, Crohn's disease, we say be healed. Or is it Crohn's? Crohn's disease, be healed in Jesus' name. Every thyroid cancer, see it's freezing because there's so many people commenting. Guys, don't spam your comment just type it once and we're going to pray there's a lot of people praying but it's freezing our screen here we just pray right now over dawn over Don's son, Tristan. Tristan, be saved, be healed, be delivered in Jesus' name. I pray over uh, Panha, healing in the body right now in Jesus' name. We pray for David. Uh, a mom says David's drug addiction right now. David, we command that drug addiction to be broken. Teresa, we pray deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. All anxiety, all depression, go now in Jesus' name. All go, nausea, we pray be healed or be delivered of fear right now in Jesus' name. Right now, be delivered. Amen. man, so many comments coming in. We pray back pain be healed. Scoliosis, Virginia, be healed. Alyssa Perez, be healed of scoliosis right now. Josh, we say be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, bodies be healed. Bree, I pray for your family, restoration. Liz, I pray for your son and you to be healed. Isaac, we pray, Lord, convict him of sexual sin tonight in Jesus' name. Ankle, right now, we say be healed of your ankle. Jesus. Swollen ankle right now. Kristen, be healed in Jesus' name. Miriam, be delivered tonight. Every spirit must leave Miriam tonight in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for Samuel Robles. Free him from alcohol. Alcohol, release your grip right now. You have no power. Release him in Jesus' name. We pray over London for, uh, London for that, that toe fungus, the infection there. Be healed. Mara, for kidneys to be healed in Jesus' name. Sean Daniel, be healed right now in Jesus' name. All back pain must go. All back pain must go. And guys, we're barely scratching the surface here, but there's a lot of people in the chat praying. There's about 5,000 people in here right now. I pray right now for Isaiah, who's three, that's not speaking. Father, I pray that you would just give him the ability to speak right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for Louise. He would encounter you. For Jamie, break that addiction, Lord. I pray for Kate that that blood clot would diminish 
In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray you would break Matthew from every sexual bondage that he's stuck in. I pray, God, for Randy's prostate to be healed tonight. I pray right now for uh, knees to be healed. Natasha, I say be healed of cancer right now. Lawrence, we command that spirit of addiction to leave you now. Go now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for Libby, eight-year-old Libby that has a kidney disease. Lord, heal Libby tonight as we put this out there and we speak your word. We intercede and we petition you, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. Jeff, be healed in Jesus' name. Joni, we break that addiction right now. Father, we pray for uh, Keenan with five years old with autism. Heal him, God. Layton, three years old, not talking. Lord, right now, healing, healing, healing. Heal autism, God. If it's a spirit, deliver. If it's a sickness, heal. We pray this tonight in Jesus' mighty name. I don't know if you could even keep up with some of these. I had Roy on recently. He's like, man, these are moving too quick here. I know they're moving quick if you want to try to jump in on some of these. Lord, right now. Yeah, I can pray for... Uh, thank you, Lord. Stage four, Jesus liver name. and bone cancer. Marinella, in Jesus' healed. name, I curse that. Be healed. Spirit of death. You shall not die, you shall live and declare the works of the Lord. In Jesus' name, Claire, confusion. Yep. Confusion and anxiety. I, I, I speak that cloud of confusion yep. dissipates tonight in Jesus' name. Clarity of mind. You have the mind of Christ. In Jesus' name, Ryan, deliverance of addiction. Yep. Whatever yep. The, the addiction is, in Jesus' name, that rope of addiction gets burnt off your life today. Every chain gets severed from your life. In Jesus' name, spirit of despair and despondency. I curse depression. I curse the work of depression. I command a fresh a baptism of joy in your life. You will not kill yourself. You will not on. become despondent. In Jesus' name, you shall laugh. You shall laugh. Yep. Your days of sorrow end. He clothes our sackcloth. He removes the sackcloth of sorrow and he clothes us with joy inexpressible and full of glory. In Jesus' name, financial problems. I pray, Father, as they're givers, as they sow, that you would, you would just supply all their needs according to your riches and glory. They would not have any needs. In Jesus' name, I pray for uh, Nalia. Deliverance. I, fr I, I lost her. her. I know. They, dude, Deliverance if you guys saw Jesus how fast name. these comments are moving, it's unbelievable. There's literally Very hundreds fast. coming in per minute. It's insane. Shay, addiction to smoking. Yep. Anybody that smokes that's yes. watching right now, Break I curse addiction. the taste of nicotine not in your God's mouth. Not God's will for you. I curse the taste of nicotine. The next time you grab a cigarette, nope. you'll just want to throw up in yes. Jesus' name. You'll never have a desire for it. I curse the taste for marijuana. That's just melting your brain and Come on. ridding you of any type of uh, drive in life. In Jesus' name, that thing which was once appealing shall become no longer appealing. In Jesus' name. Erica, unforgiveness and anger. In the name of Jesus, I pray the love of God shed abroad in your heart right now. That the revelation of what Jesus did on the cross for you would just spur you on to forgive, realizing there's nothing they've done to you that we didn't do to God in the first place. In wow. Jesus' name, epilepsy, yes. demon of epilepsy. Leave. In Jesus' name, I curse that. Night terrors. Right now, Lord, no more night terrors in Jesus' name. No more night terrors. I pray for Elena's family to be saved right now. Salvation over the Martinez family. Lots of salvation over families. Lots of OCD. Hmm. We pray, Lord, break off OCD now in Jesus' name. That Tell spirit. Them to watch tomorrow. Yeah, and tomorrow yeah. we're going to talk about mental illness, and TJ is going to give his testimony of him overcoming OCD, and we're going to be talking about God breaking mental illness. That's an epidemic right now. Sleep paralysis. We come against that now. Naomi, TMJ. I think that's in the jaw. We pray be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Asthma be healed right now. Janelle's family, right now, we just pray restoration. We pray salvation over Jamie's brother. We pray for salvation over the Hernandez family. We pray right now over Michelle. All trauma right now would be broken. Alcoholism for Ben, Ryan, and Peter. Lord, break this off of them tonight in Jesus' name. I pray for Jennifer, her impatience. Lord, help her to be patient, God, in Jesus' name. I pray for Sunshine Stanley's daughters. Lord, save them, heal them, deliver them according to your word. I pray right now that for Nancy's jaw, she said, Lord, align it. I pray God, align her jaw in Jesus' name. Over Micah's hernia. Lord, heal Micah's hernia tonight, God. Do your work, Lord. Lord, this is you doing the work. I'm not doing nothing but praying like you commanded me to. But you do the heavy lifting tonight. I pray all false religious spirits to be broken now. I pray anger off of that 14-year-old right there in the chat. I pray, Pablo, deliverance from that spirit of lust. Lust, go now in Jesus' name. Up and out. Jesus told the demon, up and out. So we command that spirit to come up and out right now. I pray for Tali and Justin that your marriage will be restored right now. I pray for Nic Nicholas's dad, Sal, his stomach to be healed. ASAP preach. I pray that the lump in your throat would go in Jesus' name. Amen. That lump would go now. Leave his, his throat now in Jesus' name. 
You have no power. Be healed right now. I pray right now for umbilical hernias. Lots of hernias. Elaine, I command that hernia to go now. Body be healed. I command bodies to come in alignment with God's word right now. You will be healed in Jesus' name. You shall recover in Jesus' name. Sandy says head to toe body pain. Sandy, we command that pain to leave you now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for unbelief. Right now, God, bring healing, bring restoration in Jesus' name. Lord Cam and Sarah, I pray their marriage would be healed and restored in Jesus' name. Someone wrote in the chat, pray for America. Come on. And I think that's a good, a good thing to do right now. Lord. America and Canada. America is the last bastion of freedom on planet Earth. It's the last really true pl uh, free place on Earth. And so America, Lester Summerall used to always say, America is worth fighting for. And there's an attack against our nation, well, your nation, but I consider America my nation. My wife is American. But Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ, we join our faith together with those watching online, those in studio, and any attack of the yes. devil against this nation, we command it to fall apart now. Every plan of the wicked, it miscarries now. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Everything the enemy's trying to uh, do in this nation, that spirit of confusion coming yes, on people, yes. New gender ideologies and destroying all that stuff in Jesus' name, trying to destroy any attack against the family in this nation, yeah. trying to destroy the the God order of a family in Jesus' mighty name. We come against that now. I speak revival as it's already here in this nation. I, I pray, Lord, fan into flames the fire of revival, Lord, that from Seattle, Washington, down to Miami, Florida. And Boston, Massachusetts, down to L.A., California, that one more time, an awakening would hit this yes. nation before you return, Jesus. I pray, Lord, that full families would be saved. Lord, that even as you said earlier, 120 people turned loose after they got filled with the Holy yep. Ghost, turned the whole world upside down. We got over f almost 5,000 yep. people watching as they got prayed for for the baptism in the holy ghost i pray that you turn loose from this broadcast a generation that will be your hands your feet and your mouth on the earth america our confession is not america's america is too far gone our confession is not america is uh is, is the devil's our confession is that america shall be saved yes in jesus name in jesus name thank you lord and guys, keep this attitude of prayer as the weeks continue. Keep this culture of prayer. We've been going out for an hour and a half here. We're going to do some Q&A, hang out for a little bit with the chat before we get off here, give you guys a chance to give. But man, what a powerful hour and a half prayer meeting. Keep this attitude. And we've been doing these prayer meetings almost every week on the channel, which we never did these before. For some reason, we had prayer meetings, but never on live on stream. So we're going to keep these prayer meetings going. I also want to challenge you guys to sow into what God is doing, whether it's me, whether it's TJ, whether it's other people. We need your support. We can't keep putting this message out without your guys' help. So you guys help us out tremendously. I pray that you are encouraged tonight. Let us know what God did tonight. What? How did you get encouraged tonight? What did God do in your life tonight? Type it out in the chat as we conclude the prayer portion and we go into some of the hanging out with the chat for a little bit. And you know, listen, we've been squeezing TJ. He flew in. He went straight to four services yesterday, two hour stream tonight. We have another podcast. I'm guessing is going to go probably an hour and a half, two hours tomorrow. So I want to make sure he does get some rest today as well because he'll just keep going. He's like the Energizer buddy, Bunny like me. But guys, let me know if, you if you're enjoying these prayer meetings, what God did in your life. If you have a testimony, share it. If you have a question, we will hang out with the chat for a bit and kind of relax now. I know we've been going hard in prayer and hang out with the chat for a bit here um, and read some of these. But also, I want to put up a giving link if you'd like to give into this ministry. It, we'll put it up right here. Nico, you want to put that up? You guys can scan that. I know you guys keep asking. We don't have all the stuff on screen because it just kind of looks ugly to have all the text on this nice studio screen. So we just have the QR code. It's a little cleaner. And then the links to give are in the comments. If you were blessed tonight, if you've been blessed by the ministry, if you don't know, all of our content is free and we don't take up like these long offerings. We just say, hey, if you want to give, you can. But we don't do these 30 minute sermons about you need to give. And so we do have a partner's call this Thursday. If you monthly partner on the website, you'll get a link to all of that. I'll announce that more tomorrow. 
But let us know, guys, in the chat. Let me just read some of these comments here. And if you guys have any specific questions for me or TJ, not like super deep, you know, five-hour answer questions, but just something simple, something lighthearted. Don't give us some super deep what theological. The <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't give us some super deep about what is the Trinity. We have videos on that. These are just some lighthearted, um, fun questions you can ask. <laughs> TJ is a blessing, someone said. Yes, he is. Someone said, I got goosebumps. God bless you. And the man of God beside Isaiah. That's TJ Malkanji. And t tell them a little bit about your channel and how they can find your stuff too as we read some of these comments. Sure. Well, if you like my preaching, if you didn't like my preaching, then you can tune this out right now. fire, <laughs> but man. But if you like my preaching, you can go to my channel. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's just my name, TJ Malkanji, M-A-L-C-A-N-G-I. And we go live whenever I'm, I'm, I'm home. We go live every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. But I'm actually going to add a nighttime service there, too. Uh, and we release regular uh, videos, original and exclusive for YouTube. We have an Instagram uh, channel. I sound like a little 90-year-old. Yeah. We have an Instagram <laughs> We have an Instagram account, too, TJ Malkanji. And uh, it, it's been doing very well. We do, th like, 30 to 45-second real short-form content and con uh, content. And uh, it, it, it helps a lot of people. It's like a burst of energy, uh, you know, to, yeah. to start your day or during your day. So I'd encourage you to, to definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. Which is in the description and on screen. I mean, and in the comments. Yeah. G yeah. Are, yep. Awesome. Mods are posting so you can it. click that link, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're at 22,000 subscribers. So if it's another TJ Malkanji, don't subscribe there. We have 22,000 subscribers. And if it is another TJ Malkanji that has more subscribers than me, yeah. I want to know what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, no, there's none. <laughs> I don't think anyone has that name. Uh, no, nobody. Um, and then uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Um, you can also, we have events uh, in the US and Canada and abroad. I'm actually going to England for the first time here. And you can get all our events on our website, salvationnow.ca, salvationnow.ca, and then you just click the events page. And uh, I'd love to see you at any of our events, and uh, live meetings are, are, are awesome. So, and what do you guys think about us being together in person? Because we've done like 10 streams together. Sure. This is interesting because it's the first time we're sitting next to each other, which is awesome. And this is the goal of this new studio. It's still very new because we launched it like end, or early February, end of January. But man, I'm so excited to have you out here. And I hope we could do this more because it's just different being in person. Like it's like it's different than it's just so looking cool. at a screen. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you, uh, Sharon Becerra, Becerra for giving. She said, preach on young preachers. Jim! Jim, if I had a little button, I'll, I'll put some sound effects on soon here. But Jim, you're an absolute legend, bro. Thank you for the donation. I really appreciate that. Warren and Donna, so thank you so much for the prayers. Thank you, Warren and Donna. Um, Jorge Velez, thank you so much. Said, thank you, anointed one. God bless. And then Debbie Coons said, thank you so much. May God bless you. Thank you, Debbie Coons. Guys, you guys can keep giving. The ones I'm reading are from PayPal in the link. If you give on the website, I'll read it and see it later. But we appreciate all of you sewing and partnering. Again, it's not required. So if you're like, oh, I don't like giving the preachers, then don't give. It's very easy. If you don't like giving, don't give. But the Bible says if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. So Funny story about Jimmy. I, I, Jim? I, for a long time. You know him? Yeah, I thought his name was Jim Mai. Really? And then I connected the dots. It's just Jimmy. I thought it was Jim Mai too. No, it's Jimmy. Really? Yeah, his Why is there a space? Creative license. No, dude. Jim, where are you at, bro? I've been three years. He's been, I think he's been here since day one, and I've said Jim Mai. No, There's no Jimmy. way it's Jimmy. Jimmy. It is Jimmy. Bro, it's no. Jimmy. Three years of me being like, Jim Mai, thank you. Jim, where are you at, Jimmy? Thank you guys for your donations. No way, bro. There's no way. Look at everyone in the chat saying, me too. Jim's a legend. He's been here since day one. There's he no way he hasn't corrected me. I've even met him in real life, and he didn't correct me. I nice. need to see him. If you guys see his comments, please, I want to make sure that... Uh, I see this. There's no way, yeah, bro. His last name's something else. Did you talk to him? He said that? No, I, I You're just, just guessing? He sewed on my website once, yeah, and yeah. I saw his name, and his name was totally different. Did you just leak his name <laughs> right now? <laughs> Dude, no way. Yeah. I can't believe I've been saying Jim Mai. It's true. It's Jimmy. Dude, what? Is he? Did he write that? Yeah. Yeah. Jim, how have you let me it's for Jimmy. three years say thank you, <laughs> Jim, Jim Mai? Mai. Yeah. <laughs> I've said that, bro. Bro, what? Guys, for three years, he's been in here donating every stream. And I say Jim Mai every single time. And I'm like, that's such an interesting name, Jim Mai. Is I it was Jim Mai. Dude. I no get corrected way. everywhere I go. Jimmy, why haven't you corrected me, bro? I'm I'm like shook right now. I'm literally shook right now. I get corrected everywhere I go. That's hilarious. It's, it's on Bro, if you would have never come, I would have been up in heaven, been like, Jim Mai, what's <laughs> up, bro? He'd have been like, bro, it's Jimmy. Roy, thank you so much. And then all the anonymous, thank you, said praise Jesus for your preaching. Thank you, anonymous and, and Roy. Dude, no way. Jim, where are you, bro? I'm shook right now. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. I'm literally not going to be able to sleep tonight. I've been calling you Jim Mai. 
I'm like, man, this guy's Jimmy. Look at my wife. She's like, what? I had an epiphany. It's Jimmy. Where is he at, dude? My I got to find him. I was shocked too. The, when the comments are moving too quick. You, you just casually changed my life, dude. Someone said, so funny. That's crazy. My mom, look at my mom said, Jimmy, what? With her mind blown emojis. Even my mom <laughs> knows how to do the emojis, guys. Come on now. Get with the program here. Your mom's super cool. Yeah, my mom's amazing. Everyone saying Jim Mai it is. Dude, Jimmy, I feel like you're a different person now. What's better, Timmy's or Starbucks? Uh, Timmy's, you, 100%. Well, you're from Canada, dude. I can't okay. say Starbucks. I worked at really? Starbucks. Have you been at Timmy's? I worked at Starbucks for three years, and it is, in my opinion, it's like the McDonald's of coffee. But Timmy's is like mainstream. Like, it's not. Well, they got bought out by Burger King, and they had a decline of quality. Anyone that drinks coffee, like at that level, is going to laugh if we say that Starbucks or Timmy's is good because they go to those little sure. tiny yeah. coffee shops where they hand press beans it. Are from they have Ethiopia. beans in the bag. Yeah, the <laughs> beans are right there, and they're making them, doing everything fresh, drying them out right there. But, anyways, Jimmy, I can't believe people my are life. saying Tim Hortons is better. Well, all these Canada people. Someone wrote Timmy. All these Canada. <laughs> Isn't that what you guys call it, Timmy? Tim no, in, like Tim, Tim Mai, like Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy, Tim Mai. Tim Mai. <laughs> it's actually pronounced Freddie Tim Mai. Freddie and Priscilla, thank you. Said awesome healing and deliverance prayer. May you both be blessed with this offering. Thank you so much, Freddie and Priscilla. And of course, I'll be sewing into TJ before he leaves. Anonymous, thank you so much. I refuse to drink Starbucks. I don't drink coffee, but I've had both. And I think I don't think either of them are like that level of coffee. But who knows? I love the anointing of these two. Thank you so much. This is the, dude, isn't the chat move crazy fast? Bro, Because you've never Hortons seen it like in person over. like this, huh? They, Tim Hortons is? Why are Americans They're not in the so US? strong on it? There is, the US? there is one. There's one in New York City. There's one in Buffalo. Is it not doing good? No, they do well. But well, it's a I Canadian mean, brand. It's Canadian yeah, brand. yeah, yeah. Yeah, the chat goes crazy. Hello to Brazil. Janae. This is why people are like, you didn't see my comment? I'm like, dude, there's literally 4,000 people in here right now commenting. I'm trying to read them as fast as I can. Thank you so much, uh, Janae. So thank you, Isaiah. And then I got your prayer request. Thank you so much, Janae, for the donation. Blessings to you both. McDonald's better than Tim's. I don't know about all that. McDonald's better than Tim's. I don't like Starbucks. You don't drink coffee, right? Neither of us drink coffee. Yeah, I'm probably not a great like. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We we are both two guys opinion, that don't drink coffee. We're over here trying to mean. judge what's the best coffee. <laughs> but again, I did I did drink a lot of coffee when I worked there. I just don't drink there anymore. I don't drink I don't drink coffee anymore. It's not a religious thing, by the way. Those of you who are like I got I can't drink coffee because Isaiah Salivar doesn't. It's not religious at all. It's just I don't drink coffee because I got burned out and I have a desire for it. Someone Bobby, wrote, someone Whitehead, wrote, Isaiah, you. when are you coming to Canada? I'd like to know that too. Dude, I used to go to Canada. Like four or five times a year. I used to go to, well, you know, that Abbotsford yeah. in Vancouver. I just haven't been. I've been to Montreal one time, and it's a, it's a long flight. And the borders, dude. I don't have the... You can come in now. Really? Yeah, you can come uh, in. You don't have to have the Fauci ouchie? No Fauci ouchie. Oh, wow. I thought you had to have the Fauci ouchie to get in. <laughs> the Fauci ouchie. I didn't know, dude. <laughs> you, uh, Nico, Nico's been warming up that laughing. He's been waiting to laugh this whole time. Bubble it up. <laughs> I didn't know, dude. Fau no, you don't need to anymore. <laughs> okay, I didn't know. I'm not, you know, not putting shade on anyone out there that, that has the, has the, you know, the ninth, the ninth has more boosters in a restaurant, but yeah, more booster seats. Not, I don't want shade any, uh, no shade on any of you that have your ninth booster. More boosters than a restaurant. Oh, they stopped it? I didn't know. I didn't know they stopped it. Yeah, for Canada. Gosh, to get into the U.S., you still do. Oh, you still need it. Okay. I won't say how I, I won't say how I got in. Yeah, we, we smuggled TJ in to preach. Let's just put it that who way. Who knows who watches Let's just this. put it that way to smuggle him in. Joe Biden, if you're well, Joe Biden's probably sleeping right now. But if he is watching, <laughs> if Sleepy Joe's watching, then um, yeah, someone said shots fired. Oh, I didn't know. Is that like offensive to say that? I just thought that's what everyone calls it. Uh, I didn't know. You should bring Nico on. Okay, listen, I'm getting him a laugh cam, dude. We should just change this wide angle. Is it? We even use this? This we don't even use this angle ever. Like you know what I mean? We should just put that as the laugh cam for Nico. I mean, this angle is cool. Maybe we'll do an ultra wide where you can see like the whole studio set. Because we never use this angle. This angle is just this angle is just so much better. You could like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's more, yeah, it's more. It's personal. like yeah, it's like why would we go to that angle if this is angle? Although that angle is cool too, <laughs> but it's like you know what I mean. No one wants to see my little chicken legs. Everyone's laughing. Look at all these laughing emojis. My chicken legs. No Where one wants to see my at? chicken legs. I have socks. Oh, he's on. proudly not rocking socks. I have socks. No, I have socks. Yeah, but you're proudly like showing your ankles. Like, oh yeah, you don't yeah. Mind. yeah. I do it yeah. on accident, but I have. socks You got on. ankles like this. You don't well, hide I have, that. I have little chicken ankles. You don't put this fire under a brush or under Bro, a bed. I have. I have. You, you, you keep have, this you out for everyone to see. You have some thick ankles, dude. I was a sports guy. You have some ankles. Oh no, no. <laughs> thick ankles or no, no, cankles. But no, no, you have ankles. No, I don't have cankles. You have ankles. These are sport ankles. No, you have sport ankles. Yeah, I have. Um, basically, yeah, that table has better legs than me. But no, I have, <laughs> that my ankles look like after you get done eating a bone and wing at Wingstop and there's just a tiny bit left, that's literally my, <laughs> my ankles, tiny, tiny. 
<laughs> Basically, I'm like standing on spaghetti sticks. pieces of spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, maybe an ultra wide would be cool, having like the whole set. But then again, it's like, when are we gonna even put that on? I don't know. We gotta figure it out. This angle just always looks better to me. Like, let me know in the chat what you guys think. Thankles. I just made thankles up, by the way, guys. So you guys can feel free to use it. You don't need to give me credit. Isaiah's Carl legs. Yeah, I have about. Let me see. Does Carl even work on here? There he is, with the giving link behind him. <laughs> yeah, there's Carl in person. Carl's, no, Carl's all startled up right now because you guys are talking about his angles. So you got him all startled and crazy. He's promoting the giving link. So there you go. The giving <laughs> link's on Carl now. Much love, family. We're the only stream where you can literally pray fire for two hours and, and then laugh. joke about ankles or thankles. Is that what I said? Thick ankles. But you do I have never nice... heard thankles. I've heard Were you thankles. An, weren't you an ankle model before you got saved? Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah Little I, known fact. I was going to say because most people don't see your face, but yeah, he was an ankle model. I don't have the face for... <laughs> Modeling, but I had the ankles. Yeah, you had the ankles. They're like, uh, he went to a modeling audition. They're like, ah, we'll take the ankles. I'll take, have you model these? I don't have socks. the height or the face for modeling, but I, I do it. have the ankles. Feel it. Uh, let's see. Think of chicken links. I'll rob them back. Carl. Hey, what did yes, you? that's the Carl. I love Stockton. It was this angle's more up close and personal. It just looks better. The wide angle. I mean, let's go back to. It. Let's just chill here for a little bit and look at the thankles. Um, just thank God for your thankles. <laughs> I can't tell if you guys are kidding. My wife said she can't tell if we're kidding. I don't know. Well, we don't know. There's ankle models. Guys, we are kidding. If you didn't know, that was sarcasm. <laughs> How old are you, TJ? Someone's been writing up for a How old are you? I didn't even know. We were trying to figure it out. 30. 30? You're 30? Why did you think I was I older? I think you're like 26 or 27. Oh, praise God. Yeah, I didn't know you were 30. Wow. Dude, you're 30? Here's a, here's a funny game. What you're do you not think a young adult TJ anymore. stands for? Oh, the, the focus is off here. What does TJ stand for? Yeah, I want to see the I comment don't even section. know your name, dude. I want to see the comment section. Thomas? Timothy? I won't, let me see the comments. What? Here. Is your name Timmy and I've been making fun of Tim Hortons this whole time? Yeah. Dude, I don't even know your name. How have I had, how have we been friends? We're like real friends too. We text all the time. We go on each other's <laughs> broadcasts. We've preached together multiple times. And I don't even know your name. I've, I had to have known it. I just don't know anymore. People come up to me and ask me Th Thaddeus. 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 And he goes typing Thaddeus in the comments. That would be sweet. Terrell. An ankle model with the name Thaddeus? That's great. Toe <laughs> models. Terrence Johnson. Trevor James. I I know. I you told me your name before, right? Maybe. There's no way I don't know Theodore your name. Theodore Jackson. That's cool. Dude, I always I'm, joke when people come and I well, say. Well, I also didn't know Jim's I name say, for three uh, years. I say I'm Tyrese, Tyrese Jamal. Is it Timothy? And then they like look at me like that's not. <laughs> that doesn't Timothy, fit. Tim, <laughs> Timothy Timothy John. It is Timothy. It is. Yeah, but I it's must not have John. known that. Tyrone James. See, like, do I look like a Tyrone? Yeah, you Who look like that? a Tyrone. You for sure. <laughs> you want? If I had to guess, it'd be Tyrone. Tyrone or Terrell? Timothy James, close. I didn't ever know your name. This is so weird. I didn't know Jim's name or your name. Why do you guys not tell us your names? <laughs> TJ Ankles, Thessalonica. It's uh, Timothy Joel. Timothy Joel, really? I used to hate it. Why do you not say your name? Why are you not Timothy? You don't look like a Timothy now, No, though. I don't. I don't. I look like a TJ. But why did you change your name to TJ? I didn't change it. It's just an accident. Who started calling you that? <laughs> Actually, it was my like <laughs> second grade. Why did you change your name to TJ? <laughs> of course you didn't. Of course you didn't change it. It's just an acronym. Why did you? Why did you start calling yourself TJ instead of Timothy? Second grade teacher, and so, she used to spell it T E E J A Y. I don't know why. Who calls you Timothy? Your grandma. I guarantee your grandparents call you Timothy. My grandparents. There's no way they call you TJ. English. What do they speak? Italian. Really? Like my, my uh, yeah. You speak Italian? No. So how do you? You don't talk to your grandparents? No. Oh wow. <laughs> Hi grandparents. You should learn Italian. I only have one left. Okay. Like 94 years old. Oh, wow. Great lady. Your parents had you when they were older then? Yeah. My brother goes by I'm an the acronym. last child. Really? How many siblings do you have? Three. Uh, two, wow, I'm two, learning two, a lot. Two, two outside of me. Uh, a lot. I just I'm learning a thought. There's learning nothing thought. about thoughts here. I'm learning a lot. All right. Someone said, what kind of what kind of oil? I'm not sure that. Nice name. So you can't use the QR code. I can't use it. Let me try it out right now. You can give on the uh, comments, the pinned comments. Someone wrote, what kind of oh, oil? Oh, the QR code works for me. Maybe you because you're watching on a phone. Take yeah. any oil you want. Goya. I don't care. Doesn't matter. It's not the oil. It's just symbolic. <laughs> you're Tim Mai, my wife said. Instead Tim of Jim Mai, you're Tim Mai. <laughs> Dude, how we'll have I never it, known sorry, your I'm gonna name? I'm going to change my YouTube channel to Tim Mai. Yeah, this is crazy. So basically, I'm like Paul and you're Timothy. That's cool. Pretty much. Cool. Yeah. Wait, why would it. you be Paul? Because <laughs> I'm older, dude. <laughs> I'm 31, bro. I'm way older than you. You're well, only 30. What if you're Isaiah and I'm Joel? Dude. Yeah, that's my prophet. I'm Paul and Timothy. Well, actually, my middle name's Luke, so I'm Luke and Timothy. And then, what'd you say your name was? <laughs> Timothy Joel. <laughs> Joel. Joel. And I'm Isaiah Joel. 
<laughs> I don't even know. I already forgot. All right, Joel and Isaiah and Luke and Timothy. We both have an Old Testament and a New Testament name. We do. Then they can't even see us pound it because the camera. It's like, what does it look like? It, nothing. It looks like we're our arms are severed. Going, it's severed <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> Amputated. Y'all ages are so close. Yeah, I'm 31 though. I'm way older than him. What's your nationality? I am. Well, I'm Italian, my family, but I'm born and raised in Canada. And I still live in Canada. Montreal. So you're an Italian, but you're from Canada. Yeah. But Canada's not a thing. You're just from Canada. <laughs> what do you mean Canada's not a thing? There's real there's, there's not a nation? No, it's not it's not it's not like an <laughs> it's not an ethnicity. Canada's not a thing. Wait, is Canada is Canada like there's like an ethnicity where you're just Canadian? It's like only? American. But American's not a real ethnicity. I know, though. that's why it's it's a blending pot. Okay, so if you're born in you yeah, you can't be like you know, nobody's really you're Canadian. Like Canadian. Only natives are really Canadian. Is there anyone that's just Canadian? There are no other natives, like the ones who live. Where do they here. live in the snow? A lot of them in the tundras <laughs> in the mountains. Oh my God. All over. There's reserves. They're great people. I actually <laughs> do a lot of work on. Is there any <laughs> real, true blue maple Canadians in the chat? Is any of you like a real maple Canadian? Like oh, you're for sure. You're really a Canadian Ameri Canadian native for sure. They're gonna start. You're gonna see what the A's. I didn't even know that. I'm learning so much today. I feel like I didn't even go to school. When are you preaching at Life Song? He preached yesterday. I'll be preaching soon. Wait, everyone's making fun of me? I didn't know. My, how would I know this? My bad. They didn't teach us in school. Like, I just thought you American Canadian. Geography. You're just from Canada. American geography. Uh, Saskatchewan. You're Saskatchewanian. Saskatchewan's are real Canadians. Okay, yeah. so yeah, they're all offended now. Here. Okay. 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 I didn't know. I didn't know. We say like we're American or like we're Caucasian, but like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Some people just don't know. I didn't know that was like just a, I'm just Canadian only. I'm nothing else. I didn't know that existed. <laughs> Isaiah, you're making Americans look bad. I know. Listen, there's 3,100 of you. I know a bunch of you didn't know that either. I've never met a true blue native Canadian. Okay, look, our only contribution is not Justin Bieber. Someone wrote, is Justin Bieber. He is, but he's not our best contribution. There's better things. We've had, yeah, we've sown better things. TJ's, TJ's the best. We've sown better things than Puerto Rico, than Justin Bieber. My kids are real Canadian, Canadian natives. Okay, I learned, guys. I'm learning. Look at, I'm not, I'm not as smart as some of you thought. My bad. Sorry. Can Christians eat pork? Yes. Isaiah's just California. I can't imagine not what? eating pork. I don't really like pork, to be honest. Bacon? I don't really like meat, honestly. No. Ribs? I don't like bacon. Pork ribs? Mm -hmm. I'll eat it, but I would never be like, I want ribs or I want meat. Like, I just not a meat. I'm not Jordan a meat Peterson. That is a great contribution. I also don't even like food, so who am I even to talk about food? American and Caucasian. <laughs> I don't even like food. food. Well, I'm half Hispanic, you eat out half of, Italian. Like, you just yeah, eat I'll just out eat of whatever. Duty? I'll just eat one time a day, whatever it is. Like out of duty, you don't even enjoy. Oh, it. I hate eating, dude. I only eat to stay alive. I, my, if I had one wish, it would be to never eat again. Lord, I dread I eating. We change that right now. Yeah, help me, Lord. Or you give him entertainment. I have no appetite. Isaiah doesn't like food. Yeah, everyone knows here. I don't like to eat. Uh, I love someone said I love bacon and ribs. Yum yeah, ribs. Yeah, I'm not a meat. I'm not a. I, I'll eat meat. I'll what's enjoy your favorite, it. What's your favorite uh, fast food joint? Uh, I don't have a favorite fast food. My, I'm trying to think. Um, like quick fix. Meeting ended late. You have to go eat. Somewhere. I don't know, dude. I'll eat anything. I'll literally eat anywhere. If I'll, I'll find something steak picky somewhere. Shake. Well, yeah, steak and shake's not here. But if I had to pick one place, it's because I don't have it. But if I had it, I'd be burned out on it. Steak my, and shake over like in dude. And so out? here's my yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. My what? problem is this. No, this is my problem. Everyone already knows this. Maybe you'd. I whatever I find that I like. So say I go. I like In and Out. I'll literally eat it every single until day you're... until I'm burned out, and then I'll never eat it again. So In and Out, like seven years ago, I ate it every single day for like 20 days. I burned out, and I'll, I can't stand it now so i've done that everywhere so that's why like i just i burn myself out one time i ate wing stop this is so bad I, I feel like i'm not even saved when i say this i think i eat wing stop for like eight days straight one time and now i'm just like can i even eat wing so yeah i do that all of you guys you guys obviously know i have an addicted personality which is why i can't get into hobbies and do anything extracurricular because i get too addicted to it so People are like, do you do this? Like do you do too. that? I'm like, no, because then I go all out and it's I'm all like I think too. about and do. Yeah, it's well, it's why when you get saved and you become a minister, we become like influential and we've done so much for God. It's because we're focused on God. And once you get fixated on God, there's never a time where you're bored of God. He's yeah. endless. He's unsearchable. So it's amazing when you're a Christian. Look at my dad's in the chat. He knows how I am. But if you're not, my dad calls me a hobby hopper because I've done like every hobby. But when you're not a Christian, it's it's not a good way to be. But when you are a Christian, my wife's saying something in the chat about me because people are laughing, but the comments are moving too fast. Someone asked why I don't have a super thick accent. Because uh, the thick accents are like far west coast and far east coast. Uh, when you come into the middle, Ontario and 
in in Quebec, there's no we don't say a. Yeah, you guys don't. You, don't I would never think you're Canadian. I know Nico was like confused before. Yeah, I would never. Are you sure this guy's Canadian? Yeah, I would never think you're Canadian because all, all my friends are in Abbotsford and Vancouver, and they talk. Do I have an accent though? Like, do I a have little a? bit, a little bit, a little bit? My oh, wife used to make accent. fun of me all the time because of the way I said pants. Say it. Pants. 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 Like I'm wearing pants. Uh, she says pants. Bad. She pants. says what? Like pants. she's from Boston though, yeah. dude. See, we she has an accent. Boston is a way stronger accent than Canada. It's strong. Yeah, it's way. I actually stronger. came. I was preaching in Boston last week, and Good. as a I said the word smart, but I said smart. Like they do? Accidentally. Oh, okay. That, but it just oh, came just out. Oh, just because you were there. Yeah, it just came out. I said smart. Nico's wife said, no, you totally sound Canadian. Really? Someone said your voice sounds deep. Deep? That's the, the sure SM7B. No, you do have a if deep you, voice. If you hear me oh, in no, real you, life, I have like a weasel. No, you have a deep voice. No? I think my voice is weaselly. I think I sound like a little like a, you stepped on a mouse. For sure. Mm -hmm. I always thought my voice was very high pitched, but like actually, you know Detroit. what? These mics and this setup with that mixer does make your voice sound deeper. Because everyone, when we moved to the studio, said, "I didn't know your voice was deep." And then in my other studio, I sound like a pipsqueak. So I don't know. A pipsqueak. I don't know what's going on. Lots of comments. I'm trying to read them. You don't sound Canadian. Okay, so all the Canadians are saying you don't sound Canadian. Yeah. So he's he's not a true native Canadian, which apparently I didn't even know was a thing. <laughs> but he's he's a Canadian, but he's a Canadian Italian, right? You're all the way Italian. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, like a hundred, like fully. Hundred, hundred percent. Yeah, he's a hundred percent. Both parents. Do you talk with your hands a lot? <laughs> I preach really. with my hands a lot. You do, but I when don't we, talk with tonight. My hands you weren't, but no, Italians, no. we yell, we talk fast, we talk with our hands. That's true, but no, I don't use my hands. Uh, he sounds foreign. I just sound I agree with you. I feel like you do true. sound that way. I don't know what we're all talking about because we've talked about a bunch of different things. How Is do Canadians even sound? Demonic? Canadians yes. sound. They say a boot. And they say, um, what do they say all the time? Right? No, no, not right. What do they say? Boot. A. A. But they say something Sorry. else. Sorry. Yeah, but they say something else. We apologize for everything. You, you guys are very to us polite. And we, ap we apologize to you. Canadians are a different different breed for sure. They're different than, um, they're really nice though. When I go to restaurants in Canada, they're way nicer than here. Unless you're in Montreal. I have I had a bad experience in Montreal, so I can't judge the whole, yes, Montreal, the whole province by that. Depending on who you get, it's yeah, like the waiter Russian was roulette. Not nice. Yeah, it's Russian roulette. It's actually probably the worst waiter I've ever had in my entire life. Ent wow, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, she was mean. You got to come back. I asked for a ranch and she got that. really mad. She's like, why would you want that? It's disgusting. I was like, oh, sorry. What is it to her? I don't know. She was like, we don't do ranch on pizza. You know, here. I went Go to, back a, to America. I went to a Vietnam <laughs> went serious, to a Vietnamese dude, she's... place in, um, where was I? In Saskatchewan. And I ordered a pho, you know, Vietnamese yeah, yeah, yeah. soup. And the guy literally tried to talk me out of it. At and the like, far restaurant? Yeah, he started to talk like like <laughs> no, you don't get that. Get number four. <laughs> and like, like, I don't want number four. I want number three. Where was this at? It was a Vietnamese restaurant. A hole in the wall. They're shutting down actually. Well, no yeah, wonder. I wonder why. Then he's my wife ordered a number there. two. And he's like, that's too much food for you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who cares? It's more money that's in so your pocket. Rude. Isaiah, you look like Nick A30. I hear that all the time. All, I was at the mall not long ago, and there was like a group of a bunch of young young mall rats. You know the mall rats? They're the young kids that they stay at the mall all day, and they just yeah. harass everybody. They were mall rats following me around. They were like, hey, it's Nick A30, and they were like laughing. I mean, I, I've i never felt like, well, actually one other time, but I felt like so punked. Like I was getting bullied by a bunch of young kids following me around being like, it's Nick A30. Oh, yeah. On TikTok, all the young kids call me Nick A30. You ever get noticed on public? Yeah, from because of the lives. No, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, all the you time. you have a huge following. Yeah, all the time. I don't want to be like arrogant. Oh, I get noticed all the time. But yeah, it is weird when the stuff started taking off online, going places and being in the drive thru and people were like, what? what are you doing here? I'm like, oh, I live somewhere in the one hour radius because I try to keep where I live. Like, you know, I yeah, don't blast sure. it. So people are just like, oh, where do you live? Isaiah, I love your commentary. Thank you, Brianna. Uh, do you have merch? Yeah, Mark have Wampler merch. in the house. What's up? We love the Wamplers. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all. Is you that guys who I met yesterday? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Hey, yep. Mark. He's in I'm the chat you. here. Yeah, I have merch. If you go to my website, salvationnow.ca, um, there's there's a link there for for the store. We have uh, we have like four or five items. Salvationnow.ca. Does it ship here? Yeah, we ship anywhere. Okay, they'll ship anywhere. He sounds like a regular guy to me. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I got bullied. I've got bullied twice by mall rats. The one time was whenever they were calling me Nick A30 and they were following me around, which was really awkward. And the other time was when I was wearing fake Yeezys. <laughs> they straight called me out. They're like, why are you wearing fake Yeezys? Those are cheesies. How could they tell? 
they just they're young bro they know and i've always like embarrassed because i got them off amazon i was like what's it to you <laughs> bro they straight bullied me they're like your shoes are fake why don't you just wear real ones i was like i can't afford real ones i'm out here y'all the struggle on the struggle bus it was don't like five or six me. years ago <laughs> but i was like man I've, these 12 year olds out here are intense these days but yeah they called me out they're like you know those are cheesies right i was like that's was, what they call them cheesies yeah it was awkward it was like when fake yeezys first came out on amazon like everyone was get, like they were just new and uh they totally made fun of me do you speak french I do speak French. You do? Je parle français. Really? Like fully? No, you don't. I don't oh. believe you. I'm speaking it fully. right now. Okay. What do you mean you don't believe me? Say, I'm say, speaking say, French say. right now. Well, you're saying stuff from like... No, you're, I could be saying anything. No, you're, 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 you're saying stuff from like Home Alone. Yeah, no, you're no, saying no, stuff I speak from French. like Home Alone. I speak like, French. You're not... You're saying like what that girl says in Home Alone. You're not... Give a whole sentence right now. Say, Read one of these full comments in, in French. Um, Isaiah, viens Las Vegas... Those are English Nadine. words. Je viens de Canada. Je pour mes genoux. Really? Yeah, I, I speak French, man. Before God, you're really speaking Before French. Before God. Because I wouldn't know if you're speaking in tongues okay, or not. Okay, the comment is going real quick. Okay, there was one that was going to be... Oh, okay, let me do a lower one. Okay, oh, TJ, <laughs> reviens à Revival today. Uh, well, that's... That's English, English. So, bro, uh, you're speaking English. English. Well, you can't, you can't <laughs> translate Revival. It's a mixed stream. Okay. Speaking in only French sentence. Okay. <laughs> oh, j'ai besoin de guérison pour mon dos. Dude, what? They're, um, we have Timothy here speaking I don't French. Know how to say I don't even know you. Song. Apparently, we're not even friends. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. I'm a. So wait, when did you learn that? Your whole life, you've done it. Yeah, I so went to French school. Who's French in your family? I live in Little France. Quebec is little. It's all French. So your your grandparents are Italian. They don't speak they English. They speak French though. Oh, but so that's how you, of them spoke. That's how you're able to talk to them. Yeah. Well, when they were alive, not to be mean, but like I don't talk to them anymore. Okay. Well, you only It'd be have weird one left. If I still talk to them. Don't you have one left? Yeah, I have one. Oh, left. you're you're the ones that are passed away. You don't talk to anymore. Yeah, that's no, good. That's good. Weird, yeah, man. we're not Catholic out no, here. We don't do that. Yeah. Okay. So you speak <laughs> French. What else do you speak? I'm learning a lot. I feel like this is I just speak, like a, a I session speak English. Of me learning about you. I speak English. Tongues, English, and French. Tongues and French. And I could understand Spanish. Really? Because French is Latin based. So is Spanish and Portuguese. My wife's Brazilian, so she's. Wow, dude. I feel like I'm just like stuck in California, not diverse at all. I'm like, I don't even know anything. If we play it right, my kids can speak English, Portuguese, You should French. teach your kids, dude. Teach your kids. I wish I taught my kids, even though I don't know any languages. But if I knew a language, I wish I taught them. But yeah, teach your kids. That's the thing is my dad They're didn't learn. My dad's in here, so, you know, we got to be. My dad didn't learn Spanish because they wanted to talk and not like the kids know. So then he didn't learn it. And my dad's 100% Mexican. And then he didn't. Obviously, he can't teach us if he doesn't know it, right? Like, So we, we didn't learn it. And I wish I knew it, because now I have to learn it. And I try to learn. Every time I'm like, I'm going to learn Spanish, I sit down for 20 minutes. I'm like, this is too hard. And then I wait another year and try again. But it's it's, it's a year. lot. It's a lot of time, dude. It's very time-consuming. Learn a language yes. at this age? Yes. Yes. Your very brain's a sponge when you're like under 10. Someone said, aren't you half Chihuahua? Yeah, I'm half Hispanic, half Italian, and half Chihuahua. But the Chihuahua side hats. of me is only because I talk fast and because I have skinny legs. But that's about it. You can teach them tongues. Yeah, tongues is, yeah, you get that instantly. So that's not hard. There's and a good we, Brazilian DJ community Battle in Boston. France, yeah. Dude, you, I think you're speaking Home Alone. I thought you were joking. Bobby What's Whitehead. Home Alone? Thing. There's like a girl in Home Alone that's like, she says like one word in French. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, she says yeah, that. Yeah, and that's yeah, what you yeah. said. So I was like, oh, you must be saying. What do you and TJ have in common? We're both preachers. We have a lot in common. Bobby Whitehead, thank you so much. America Top Gunner, thank you. And we're both tech nerds. We both stream. We both travel and preach. We're both pretty much the same age. Our humor, too, is similar. Yeah, we have similar humor. If, we, if you were lived here, we'd hang out. We'd be like friends. I literally have no friends. Like the other day, we were saying something. I still consider you to be a friend, though. Oh, but I'm talking about like in person. <laughs> I'm talking about like an. I'm talking about like an. Well, I didn't even know your name, so we're not that good of friends. But I'm talking about like an in-person friend, because I was like, oh, for I was, sure. I was telling him about the studio, so I'm like, yeah, bro, I did this. Like, I was showing him the studio. I was, you know, showing off and stuff. This is like my baby. And I was like, yeah, I wanted to make it a place where like people want to hang out. I wanted to make it a place like comfortable where I want to be, right? Like having nice furniture, nice colors. But then I was like. Actually, I don't have any friends. I was like, no one even hangs out here. I was like, I would like to have a place where we could record. But I was like, honestly, I really don't hang out with anybody because I pretty much my brother's my only friend. And then like my family and that's about it. I'm busy. So I don't have any like really real friends that I. And also I have four kids. I'm like, yeah. dude, who am I going to hang out with? I have four I'm kids. All, all the friends I do hang out with. I do have some friends. I have kids too. So yeah. they would have chilled. All my friends that I hang out with. And I had a bunch of friends over yesterday, so I'm, like obviously I have some friends, but we all have kids. We're all part of the church. We all have young kids. We're all the same age. It's like, am I going to go hang out with like a 20-year-old dude that has no kids and be like, hey, bro, you want to come hang out with me, my wife and kids? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you got to hang out with people that are... For sure. 
that oh, yeah. changes. It yeah. was just funny as I'm explaining to you the studio. I'm like, yeah, I want to be a place where you can like hang out, and record. And I was like, oh, I don't have any friends. I'm the only one here <laughs> recording. It was funny. But if you lived here, we could like you know do this all the time and have all that hang out. We'll be. It'd be. Fun. We still are friends though. We're just not real friends. Um, someone said, man, four kids. I feel that. <laughs> Someone said, you know what I mean? I didn't even know your name, dude. Our casino was not good. Probably not. I mean, if you like cigarette smoke and losing money. And diapers. <laughs> yeah. And diapers. And people yeah. wear diapers. Really? Yeah, they go to the slots. <laughs> what? You never heard of that? I used to go to the casino all the time. I was addicted Sometimes to gambling. Sometimes it smells like crap. Because yeah. Because they, <laughs> they, put, they put diapers on yeah. and they stay at the slots because they don't want to miss their... Dude. <laughs> I I'm didn't not know speaking that. from no, like, I believe experience. It. I know, I know you go all the time, but I didn't know. You know, I believe it. <laughs> I know you go. All I the believe time. it. No, I used to go. I used to go to the casino all the time. I was addicted before I was saved, and then I got saved, and God delivered me from that. But yeah, casinos. You got to be a wise steward of your money. A wise steward. I've, that's another problem I have is I don't finish my words. I get I talk so fast. fast yeah, yeah, and I, I just I don't pronunciate. And I don't finish my words, and I slur, and I mumble. People don't believe that people wear diapers. I, go diapers. by the slots next time. Well, don't go. <laughs> go, don't go. Don't go. Don't go to the casino. Dude, go sniff the, the chairs. <laughs> go sniff, go the, sniff chair. the slots. Just sniff around and see if it smells like a nursery. It does. Um, you Someone, are real friends? Yes, Mom, we are. I'm kidding. It's a joke. Uh, Someone, guys, I have dry humor, so a lot of these things I say, they're just jokes. Someone said, are you a Canuck in French, and what's your favorite I feel like NHL you just team? cussed right now, but go ahead. What did you say? Canuck, Canuck is what they oh. call Canadian people. Oh, Canucks. I thought that was a cuss word. No, no, Canuck oh. is like... okay. <laughs> you think it's I, not slang? I'm trying to take down your YouTube channel. No, I didn't, know, I didn't know if that was like a, a slur or something. And you no, just... it means like... A, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's... I don't know if it's like offensive if you're not a Canuck. I don't know. I don't think so. The I guy would never had be last week was from Australia, and he's like, yeah, they call me, they call us Aussies. I'm like, oh, I thought that was bad to call him like an Aussie. Is but it bad like, oh, for no. me to call someone an Aussie? No, no, no. He said, well, you can call him that. But yeah, you know, I don't know. Now there's so many slurs. Like I said something the other day, and someone's like, you can't say that. I'm like, I didn't know. I mm -hmm. thought it was a normal word. They're like, no, that's offensive now. Every year, like more stuff gets offensive. So pretty soon, <laughs> true. like saying Everything. anything is going to be offensive. Yeah. Pronouns, you know? Yeah, Fauci, ouchie. People got offended when I said I didn't have the Fauci, ouchie. <laughs> but I mean, I don't know what to say. It was just a joke. I mean, it wasn't a joke. I really don't. Also, but it, it, it was hurt. a joke. Um, I'm Aussie. <laughs> but then he also told me that it's not Aussie. Like people say Aussie because it's spelled like it looks like Aussie, it's, but it's, it's Aussie. Aussie. Oh, wait, did he say the opposite? Aussie. It's Aussie, Aussie with a Z. With a Z. With a Z. Okay, okay. Not with an S with a Z. He said an Aussie. That's a hockey team. No. I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan. No, Aussie. It's Aussie. He literally told me say Aussie with a Z. Don't say Aussie. So Aussie. let me know in the chat, because a lot of you are from Australia. So let me know in the chat. Spelled Aussie. Because someone's making fun of me now saying that I'm saying Aussie, because he told me to say Aussie. I don't know what a hosier is. <laughs> I feel like that's a derogatory someone's term. A DJ. I feel like that's a derogatory someone's term. Someone's a DJ, you're a hosier? What is that? I don't know. I'm scared. Please uh, elaborate. If we're saying bad words, we don't know it. So Is that my brother, though? Because <laughs> my brother is Jason. Oh, really? Is that your brother in the I chat? I don't know. I don't know. There's Maybe no your brother's thing. calling you a hoser. Maybe. Dude, Dude, I feel like being a hoser is not a good thing. No. I don't want to get hosed. Hoosier. <laughs> hoser. I don't know what a hoser is. He, listen. Okay. Someone said Aussie is correct. Someone said my No, demons. Aussie. Okay, someone said Aussie is a dog dog breed. It's not an Aussie. It's an Aussie. Like an someone Aussie said from Australia. Someone said my demons are from Aussie. Crikey. Like, do they have like... They might be. Like, I had Australian one demon accent? be like, you're the one that brought me all the way from Africa. I don't want to be here. So, yeah. Almost always... A white man, a hoser, is to an extent the Canadian equivalent of an American, like a hillbilly redneck. Oh, wow. I'm not. So a hoser is like a, a hillbilly Canadian. I'm not. There are, that, though. Look there at are Nico hosers. pulling up stuff over here. I'm yeah. a city boy. We could tell Nico would look it up like all the podcasters do. They say, look that up. Yeah, you want to do He's the man behind the chair. Yeah, we could do that to Nico. Look that up for me. I told him that yesterday when I met him. Someone said, yeah, gluttony. Can you look that up for me? You ever watch uh, Spider-Man? Mm -mm. I don't I just, I can't watch a movie more than like a minute without being bored. Yeah, I don't watch movies. Are you going to UK? I am. I'm going to be in UK in September. Who's uh, it? Who's her? Events on my website, I think. I think we put it up. I think we're still working out details. But I'll be there in September. It's, it's spelled Aussie, pronounced Aussie. Okay. Oh, it's from Slapshot. The movie. So there you go. We're good. You speak redneck. The man behind the laugh. Nico's literally famous now, dude. We went to the premiere in Nashville. People were literally walking up going, is that the guy that laughs? Is that the laughing guy? People wanted to meet him, didn't even want to meet me. I was like getting insecure. I'm like, oh, I guess I'll hold your stuff, Nico, while you take pictures of people. They were literally taking pictures like the man behind the laugh. That's why, okay, so we are going to get a laugh cam that I could click on and like put it That's on him. Idea. But the thing is, it's going to remove the mystery that people have. But it would be funny. True. It would be funny. 
We need to get Nico on because no one's ever seen him before. And so, well, some people have, but most of these people have it. He actually doesn't exist. They're just going to be like... It's just an AI robot. The laugh. <laughs> the laugh behind the... Laugh behind the camera. All right, guys. We're having fun. We'll do this again tomorrow. So save your funny, fun questions. It's hard to get off when there's like almost 3,000 of you on here. But it's been two hours and it's 10 minutes. Great, it's a great show. It was good, dude. It was, it was a great, good. Like, Not yeah, show, and we had 5,000 people. That's crazy. that's crazy. Like, obviously, you want to have more people on. But to have the most people on while we pray... Is, is awesome because we want to get people in prayer. I didn't, you know, it was a bad way to start today because I said, oh, today's going to be way better than tomorrow. But guys, I meant, be great. I meant prayer is so valuable. It's the most important thing we can do. That's my point. But tomorrow's going to be amazing. TJ will be back on tomorrow's podcast. So we're not, we will be praying at the end, but it's going to be more him sharing his testimony, us talking and all that. We'll do Q and A at the end. But um, tomorrow, come back at six o'clock. If you haven't given, oh, thank you all those that gave. American Top Gunner, thank you. But give, the links are there. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Make sure you follow him. Subscribe to his channel. It's linked down below. It's also in the description. So get plugged in there, guys. We had fun joking with you guys, laughing with you guys, and all that good stuff. Someone said, y'all have a camera now? What do you mean? I have a camera. Um, what do you mean? I have a camera. Yeah, the, the I don't know, dude. What are we going to do with this wide angle? We'll figure something out. Figure something out. Because that angle doesn't get used, but but also, like, this is just the best angle. You know what I mean? And for shorts content, this is the best angle and all that good stuff. Okay, I won't get too nerdy. We love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Follow TJ. Subscribe. We'll be back tomorrow at 6 o'clock. Uh, let's don't end it yet. Let's do the... Boom. We got to do that for tradition. If I just end it too abruptly, the they get startled. You know, they're very, they're very fickle. They get startled easy. So we don't want to startle the chat by ending it instantly. Because it'll make them feel weird. They probably won't sleep tonight if we just end. So we'll do this. We'll hang out with you guys on the stream ending. Thank you guys for being here tonight. Make sure you like and share. Make sure you comment. Is TJ's mic? Oh, yeah, it is. It is on here. Make sure you guys like and comment. What a great night tonight. Good night, everybody. Get some good nights in the chat. Let's get some ones in the chat here. A lot of Canadians. Get some ones for the chicken legs. You have a lot of Canadian followers. Yeah. Oh, why is Carl not on the stream ending? That's a fail. That, he's there, but he's. Uh, I, have to, I have to link the scene. Isn't that the Don't scene link? Yeah, that's weird. Oh, turn him on real quick. I know why. Watch. Oh, no, still? Okay, we'll link it after. All right, guys. Good uh, night. He became our mascot on accident, uh, dude. I literally put the bird up originally so that I said, hey, if you want me to remove this bird off screen, you got to like the video. But then people liked him. So they're like, no, keep him. So then he became our mascot. He was a pigeon, but now he's a dove. He was born again. Love you guys.